Welcome to the WAN show, which is pretty much guaranteed to be a disaster today based on how the setup has gone and the fact that there is, uh, I mean, we can't deny what's here in between us today. <laughs> Didn't notice that, but we're starting the show anyway. We have got a great show lined up for you guys. The big topics are, I have finally been convinced to name and shame uh, the pool company, landscaping company that I've been using. And I'm going to be talking about, you know, why whole room water cooling the second has been delayed. And it's uh, it basically comes down to, I don't want to end up slandering anyone. So it basically comes down to, in my opinion, uh, yes. the way that they've handled the job. Allegedly. I also want to talk about why there's been almost no gaming hardware news in our LTT coverage of Computex. Um, that was not an accident, but it also wasn't something I can avoid. Yeah. And so I'll, I'll explain that in a little bit more detail later. What else we got today? The Dolphin Steam launch has been postponed probably indefinitely, but we'll, we'll dive into that later. And also, speaking of no gaming news, NVIDIA maybe temporarily joined the $1 trillion club. One trillion dollars. Wow. And they definitely did not get there through gaming GPUs. <laughs> Take that, gamers. I just realized I have absolutely no way of rolling the intro. Yeah, Dan's going to have to hit it. Sick. Hey, God. The show is brought to you today by something, presumably. I wasn't <laughs> able to see it, but maybe you guys uh, were. I'm getting there. Backblaze, Squarespace, and Blackpoint Cyber. Thank you. <laughs> it's been so long since we've done a WAN show on site like this. It's the Thai WAN show, guys, and okay. I'm absolutely here for it. Someone pointed out in the Floatplane chat that this is actually just a Starforge logo. Yes. So it's, it's okay. It's a hammer. It's okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's a hammer. <laughs> it's a hammer, and it's right between our heads. I am <laughs> so sore right now and so tired. Guys, as tired as I look, that's how tired I am. I've actually spent more time playing badminton than actually like. I think we got if if we if we collected the amount of hours we slept last night, we had one full night of sleep. Yeah, yeah, it was yeah. pretty. It was pretty rough. Yeah. I played for like five hours yesterday, and this is really bad. I I realized when I got a group chat this morning from the the center back home that I'm actually signed up to play badminton on Saturday again. Which is which is tonight. Which is tonight, but also I go back in time when I go home. So it's like far from now tonight, but yeah. I have played every day. Um, Do you think you're going to crush when you go home, even though you're sore because you're like so warmed up against good players? Um, you saw me try to go downstairs last night. Yeah, but I saw you try to go downstairs the night before as well. Yeah. And then you found a way to play yeah so i got injured on the first day um if <laughs> you see played through it <laughs> i still played every day uh so what would happen was i would heal a little bit at night and then i would spend the day walking around the show floor like hobbling hobbling around, hobbling around the show floor you're know, like i fake it pretty well on camera so anything other than the gigabyte booth coverage and the uh, what was it? Floor systems. Mm. I'm like, uh, uh. And uh, so if you look at, if you look closely at the montage of me running when we did the video in the uh, Super Micro booth where we had to like go on a fetch quest to mm. get a replacement CPU and RAM for this Blade server. If you look closely, I am like heavily limping in that video. So I would hobble around the show floor and then I would go play badminton, injure myself to the point of barely being able to lift my leg out of an uber to get out of it and then i would do rinse and repeat the entire trip here i've actually had a lot of fun it's been really great it's been so long since i've been 
in the thick of things. And you know what? It's funny because I've been seeing a lot of comments from people that are like, yeah, Linus seems better. He seems like he's having fun or he seems like he's he's chilled out or he seems like whatever. You know, if the content's going to be like this when the new CEO comes in, I'm here for it. And at first I was like, that seems stupid. Uh, no offense, because, you know, one of the videos that had a lot of comments like that was actually the $100,000 Minecraft PC build for Carl Jacobs. We shot that video like, three months ago yeah yeah um, i saw a bunch of videos about that on our cleaning video as well and i was like hmm uh comments about that but yes oh, sorry. yeah what did you um, say you said you saw a lot of videos about it <laughs> yeah he's tired too we both went out for beef noodle soup at like 2 30 in the morning last night <laughs> because that's a smart thing to do it was worth it it was good soup it was really good soup yeah um anyway at first i, I was thinking to myself okay these guys are just looking for something but I got to say, I, I felt creatively liberated at the show this year. Cool. I didn't feel like I had to just do traditional booth coverage. And honestly, I didn't want to because I could have uploaded the same thing we would have uploaded at Computex four years ago. But I feel like the channels come a long way since then. I feel like the community expectations have come a long way since then. And I feel like the industry has changed a lot since then. I will talk about the, the pool thing. I know that's our headline yeah. topic, but yeah. I actually want to talk about this other topic first. And this was almost going to be a rain walk video. I might still write it up and shoot it before we leave, but I, I want to talk through some of the thoughts that I had just here on the WAN show because you guys probably noticed, right? We shot almost nothing this year in uh, in terms of PC gaming, like for the LTT channel. I mean, Noctua had has that really cool offset uh, mounting bar thing, so you can you can drop your temperatures a little bit on AM5 CPUs by by actually moving the cooler down to where the CCDs are under the IHS and. Other than that, our first video was NVIDIA's Grace Superchip and Grace yeah. Hopper Data Center. Our second video is Floor Systems Cooling, which, okay, if this <clears throat> matures the way that they think they can, wow, it's going to be an absolute game changer for gaming laptops. Yeah. But... <laughs> If the view rates on laptop videos are anything to go by from you guys, I'm I'm thinking you mostly care about desktops. And I just I I don't see this technology making its way into the desktop in any yeah, me neither. realistic amount of time. Like just from a cost perspective, it won't make sense because you don't need the benefits. You don't need the size benefit. So why are you paying for it? Right. Um the Nocto cooler. Oh, right. Then Supermicro. Supermicro was one of the other really interesting things at the show. Uh, these these microblade servers. Did you watch this video? No. Okay. These are super cool because instead of using server CPUs, they're just Ryzen's. And so instead of going multi-socket, they're just blades with full Ryzen PCs. So it's a 3U okay. rack with eight full computers in it. And you can put up to Ryzen 7950 X3Ds. So if you wanted to do like a, a high performance game server, like like top tier single threaded performance, this is it. And you can still, you know, slice them up and virtualize them because, I, you know, it just occurred to me. Why not? I don't think we're grateful enough that virtualization for I, I, that would this would be a really interesting thing to dig into in a tech quick or something like that how did we end up with proper virtualization support on the desktop it is kind of surprised that hasn't been a gated feature at some point well i think it was at some point oh i think in the early days it was like i'm trying to think like SRIOV, i don't think was something that even if it was supported by the CPUs, I think motherboard manufacturers weren't implementing it into the into their BIOSes. I know IOMMU is something that has matured a lot over the last 10 years. Oh, okay. So it's been a minute, but yeah, like Intel Core 2 Duo apparently had some issues. With okay, yeah. Virtualization being locked off. Yeah, so there you go. The fact that we ended up with that is kind of a miracle <laughs> when you look at the way that it didn't happen with GPUs. Um, 
And to be clear, there has been stuff at the show this year that is gamer focused. I mean, uh, we've got a short that I shot for Short Circuit on Asus's Concept GPU that moves the 12 volt power off of the top. Uh, so there's yeah. no cable and it's just got a finger on the bottom. But I feel like a lot of noise was made about how innovative that was from people who don't cover Mac. Mm. Because when Apple launched the, the latest cheese grater Mac Pro, that's exactly how they did the power for the GPUs in it. And it supported cables. So it had uh, female connectors on the motherboard and you could buy a, a cable kit. So you could plug like a, a non first party GPU into it. And you could, could power it that way. But it just had a slot, an ex extended slot at the back, and you plugged it in like that, and that was how it was powered. And I'm sitting here going, like, I mean, is that really, is that really gaming news? Then uh, a, a couple brands showed off even bigger 4090s. Uh, Sweet, that's what we need. <laughs> nice. Uh, so Cooler Master did, and then uh, this wasn't in our Computex roundup here. It's not in our notes, but um, ASUS also did when I popped by. They. <laughs> We have a mock-up of a Noctua edition cooler that has 140 millimeter fans on it. Noctua's new 140 millimeter fans. So it probably performs like a hot damn, but it is absolutely colossal. We're going to have a tweet going up with just like your classic, I'm holding a regular size GPU and I'm holding that one, you versus the guy she tells you not to worry about, you know, that sort of thing. Yeah. Um, but really, the big news, the big innovations were in the data center, were in, you know, mobile. Um, Intel showed nothing for a consumer desktop. Yeah. AMD showed nothing for consumer desktop. NVIDIA showed nothing for consumer desktop. When was the last time that that happened? At Computex. At Computex. Especially. Yeah. Yeah, that's rough. And not even consumer desktop. I mean, we're not even seeing, we're not even seeing, uh, there's hints, there's hints that there's a new Threadripper coming, but is it going to be a Threadripper for enthusiasts or is it going to be Threadripper Pro, which is priced for professionals and is not really going to be applicable to gamers at all anyway, because the motherboards are going to cost $1,300 like we've seen with the current Threadripper Pros. Yeah. Um. Curious Brad says, I'm so sick of NVIDIA this, NVIDIA that. I want to see the competition rise up. You gotta give you gotta give credit to NVIDIA though. They they just keep kind of they keep kind of killing it. I and guess I'll, I'll also throw a shout out to Intel. They're yeah. trying. Yeah. Yeah, they're, they're trying. On it. Those it's, price cuts recently are actually like really compelling. Yeah. $199 for an A750. Yeah. Like, that's actually crazy. I know it only has 8 gigs of VRAM, guys, but, like, it's $200. Yeah. Like, that, that's freaking yeah. awesome. That's actually wild. Competition's back, but it seems to be between Intel and AMD. Yeah. At the low end. Yeah. Because, I mean, NVIDIA comes in with the 4060. Okay, we're going to talk about NVIDIA in more detail later. But, um, you know, first I want to I wanna talk about, you know, this 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 kind of this topic that i wanted to discuss which is like pc gaming's kind of in trouble um um yeah, 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 is yeah, it yeah, pc sorry. gaming or is it pc gaming hardware enthusiasts well i think it's a little bit of i think it's a little bit of both right because there's a lot of excitement for you know higher fidelity graphics for example and for you know game design that pushes the envelope and you know whether that's in-game physics or whether it's you know much larger scale multiplayer or whether it's right. like there's lots of different things that are not just more eye candy yeah faster gpu right and one of the observations that i made at the show is that a lot of the really exciting stuff that's happening right now is in the data center and more worrying that data center tech is not the kind of thing that i am expecting to trickle down to gamers in a meaningful way and so i want to kind of explain what i mean by that in the past 
we saw innovation, like, like there's always been this, I shouldn't say always been, but there has traditionally been this trickle down. So when multi-core was a big push in the data center, yeah. uh, you know, back, especially when software was uh, licensed per socket, right? All of a sudden there was this push to have more and more cores per socket, right? And then when performance per watt was a big push in the data center, all of a sudden we saw efficiency gains. gaming brands talking about how important efficiency was for your new gaming CPU. Which has been great because power prices in a lot of places around the world are like through the absolute roof right now. But right now, what we're talking about is accelerators. Uh, we're talking about, I mean, AMD launched that really cool looking you know, video encoding accelerator. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right? When talking about things like AI accelerators and whatnot, though, I do think that's actually going to trickle down. Well, because we're well, talking about we're talking about things like, okay, not in the gaming space, but there's that talk recently about the generative AI that's in Photoshop. Yes. That's actually pretty big. Okay. And then I do believe there's going to be games that like, you know, procedurally generated game styles where it's procedurally generated through AI accelerated tasks. But tell me this, will that AI make its way to your local processing in a meaningful way? Or will that generative AI be done in on a in a cloud server somewhere? I actually genuinely think it's going to be both. You think it will be both? Because I think there's going to be single player games that have procedural generation built into it. And they can use your local processing to do it. How are the games rating organizations going to rate a game that it's has rough. real time generated content in it? Especially with AI's ability to just like screw up. Yeah. And hallucinate, just do the wrong thing. Because you can you can put like bumpers, but it can also just go around it or find alternatives. So that that's gonna be interesting. All right. Well, you're getting ahead of me a little bit here, but I was going to point out that some of the things that we're seeing in the data center space right now are just plain not beneficial to consumers. Yeah, yeah. Um, PCIe Gen 5. This is going to be kind of an unpopular take, I think. But I fully support that both NVIDIA and AMD, and actually, I guess, Intel for that matter, all delivered their latest gen GPUs with PCIe Gen 4. We clearly, obviously, just like don't need it. Do not need double the PCIe bandwidth for our for our gaming GPUs. And then, you know, storage. Storage is another area where brands are pushing PCIe Gen 5 really hard. But we've shown and other publications have shown time and time again that the benefit to PCIe Gen 5, to, to faster storage in general for gamers, is basically nothing. Now, could that change? Um, and then, right, the last point I was going to make is that it's all about accelerators now. So whether it's video encoding accelerators from AMD or whether it's uh, AI accelerators or whether it's, um, you know, oh, like network accelerators. NVIDIA was really excited about this, this network accelerator they were showing off that has a 16 core CPU on it or something like that. Uh, yeah, there were comments on the video like, <laughs> <laughs> NVIDIA's new network card has more compute cores on it than my entire household, <laughs> yeah. you know? Um, and it's really cool technology, but we look at how long gigabit was the standard for consumers, and I'm sitting here going, is encrypting your network, is offloading network traffic encryption really going to be something we're going to see on a desktop computer in the next 10 years, 15, 20 it's hard to look that far ahead, yeah. but I kind of doubt it. And so I'm looking at all these innovations. So PCIe Gen 5, even in the data center, a big part of it is simplifying board layouts and making them more economical. So you know, taking an SSD and giving it two lanes of Gen 5 instead of four lanes of Gen 4 and getting that same bandwidth. And I think we're going to continue to see that moving into, into Gen 6. And so we may not even see consumer platforms adopt Gen 6 just over the over the power consumption limitations, or we might see it, them use Gen 6, but just use fewer lanes for everything as opposed to actually making things faster. Now, where I wanted to kind of pivot the conversation is to talk about and speculate how we could see these technologies being beneficial to consumers. I mean, one area where faster storage is supposed to help right, is um, direct storage. Yeah. 
but we've seen a couple of direct storage games and it hasn't really made a difference. No. So what's what's the deal with that? Is it just that these games were not developed start to finish enough around fast storage hardware? Yeah, I think there's also the like early adopter thing. Like, you know, when a console first comes out, look at um, Tears of the Kingdom yeah. versus the first one, Breath of the Wild. Like the the there was pretty significant improvements that happened there as far as my understanding goes if you actually happen to play it on a switch instead of emulating it uh, um but, but like they're gonna get better at using it over time but there also needs to be incentives for these devs to have to like work harder to actually do that there's mm -hmm. there's conversations going around recently about how like developing for the switch is where you're seeing pretty much all of the effort going into being efficient with things you can see pc games coming out they're like 140 gigs yeah it's just like oh yeah okay so they did yeah i don't know we'll see it happen but okay what else could we use faster storage for i mean that's always been something that's been kind of baffling to me you know when i'm uh you know performing some some simple operation my CPU is sitting at 4% usage, my RAM's barely touched, and my supposedly, you know, seven gigabyte a second SSD is pinned at a, at a, at a hundred percent. And like, uh, I'm not even doing, I'm not even doing that much. Um, you know, it realistically is the limitation always just going to be the controllers and the NAND flash as opposed to the pipes to them. But let's say, let's say they can build faster flash and, and we reduce that bottleneck. Uh, you know, what would we do with faster storage? So direct storage theoretically would allow us to do PS5 type things where you're streaming game data directly off of the SSD, um, like streaming textures. Um, I'd like to see, I'd like to see an Xbox like resume, but not just from suspend from like hibernate. Is yeah. there any reason? Oh God. Is, well, no, think about it. No, I love the concept. I just windows and sleeping. I it's, know. <laughs> But look, it's a great concept though. <laughs> yeah, we're no, we're we're having we're 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 thinking optimistic. Yeah, yeah, today. yeah, yeah. No, it's great. <laughs> Turn off that pessimistic, <laughs> cynical brain of yours and think of what we could do with faster storage. Hit me, guys. Oh, I do like that a lot. Being able to sleep your computer in the middle of heavy tasks like gaming or potentially whatever else, and come back to it and have it actually resume in the middle of it would be would be cool fire simulations guys um i mean i guess yeah there's not uh there's not a. oh this we is could a... store things faster what a what a comment amazing <laughs> oh discussion question handyman over on float plane chat asks uh, have i buried the hatchet with jensen from nvidia mm. um I actually do have an update on that, so I can I can talk about that a little bit, but I'm worried. I think you're right. I think AI AI games are are going to be they're going to have a moment, and then they're going to go away because they kind of sucked. Oh yeah, they're all going to be really bad. That's and then we're going to find ways to implement it into handcrafted games. And it's, it's going to end really up being, I, I suspect the early ones, it's going to be like a selling feature of the game. Yes. It's going to be like CGI in movies. Yeah. Right? Where it starts out as doing CGI for the sake of yes. doing CGI. Yeah. And then it turns into, you know, Wolf of Wall Street. Have you ever seen the side by side? of Wolf of Wall Street shots before and after CGI, watching the movie, you wouldn't even know yeah, I wouldn't how have there was any, CGI heavy this film is. Wow. But there's like this, there's this helicopter shot of his beach house. And other than the house itself, like the surrounding area looks nothing like the original shot. They just, and there's this doorway that he walks through and it's on a basically completely different building. Um, and I'm oh, just looking weird. at it going, was that, Necessary. Was that really necessary? <laughs> but but it was integrated in such a way that I didn't notice it. I wouldn't have noticed it all. And so if that was the director's vision, then great. Yeah, like right? I suspect there's going to be some AI procedurally generated dungeon crawler which exists purely because it is what I just said. Well, what's funny, it's funny that you say that because the procedurally generated levels 
were a major selling point of Diablo 1. Yeah. Um, and so we might see better that, but it's going to be worse in certain ways. Oh, yeah. Almost certainly it oh, will yeah. be worse in certain ways. Because it's like going to generate something that, like, the, the word for it is similar to something else, so it ends up spitting out the wrong thing and all these other problems are going to happen. But, yeah, I think we're going to go too far at first, and then it'll fall back. And then when it starts to come back and properly... I think it'll be in ways that you don't necessarily notice a ton, but yeah. So th honestly, with that timeline, I think we're like pretty significantly far out. Um, and I guess th that transitions us pretty perfectly to talking a little bit more in detail about NVIDIA and what's been going on with them lately. Uh, NVIDIA joined the $1 trillion valuation big boys club. Sorry, gamers. Uh, and I alluded to this earlier right on the heels of their launch of the RTX 4060, where gamers were up in arms. Uh, gaming media is up in arms over how uh, you know awful the 4060 is from a competitive standpoint, how awful it is from a uh, last gen to current gen upgrade standpoint. And then their stock jumps you know, 25% the following day. They briefly hit a $1 trillion valuation. Um, this is alongside Al Apple, Alphabet, Microsoft, Amazon, and uh, Saudi Aramco, which I don't know how to pronounce, but there you go, oil company. Um, they're the first chip maker to touch the one trillion mark thanks to massive demand for AI processors. That is what it is all about. I think you nailed it. I think it was last WAN show when you were saying, like, I, I think they're not being price competitive on this GPU because they just didn't dedicate a lot of, like, manufacturing to it. Like, I think that's it. I think it, why be price competitive when we don't even like we don't even have a ton of them because we want those lines to be dedicated towards other things. Here's the thing. I I don't I don't know if I was right anymore. I think it's a combination of things. Um, they, they went to an aggressive new process node that is more expensive and does have lower yields compared to what AMD is able to do with their lower end cards. Uh, the 7600 was the most recent one. And I had a meeting with NVIDIA at the show that I, I guess I should talk about, right? I don't know if any of it was on the record, so <laughs> hopefully this is all kosher, but uh, anywho. Basically, the here's what I think. And this is not anything that anyone at NVIDIA said. This is just what I think from talking to some of the NVIDIA folks, from seeing what's going on with them on a business level, I think they should split up. I think they should spin off GeForce. Interesting. Because talking to the folks at NVIDIA who do work on the GeForce team, looking at the kinds of unnecessary innovations that they are still bringing to gaming. Uh, so they announced uh, a new ultra low motion blur technology that they've announced a few things. Recently, yeah. Actually. Yeah. That they, they claim gets to something I think is like 1600 Hertz motion clarity or something like that it feels it feels very <sighs> because we can make it a little bit better you know and and that's especially true to me because we have display technologies coming down the pipe that are going to make that level of better image persistence on lcd totally unnecessary mm -hmm. right and so i'm looking at it going yeah these guys in the lab are, 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 are really trying to crush it here for gamers. And in some ways, I feel like they're kind of getting held back by the expectations that NVIDIA, the organization's shareholders have for profitability. Because GeForce is always going to be a consumer brand with consumer margins, right? Whereas NVIDIA's data center business or their AI business for, for automotive, right? Or their um, you know, embedded products business, like all of these, anything that's B2B is inherently going to have more margin because your customer is making money on it. Like a new GPU is a burden because all of a sudden there's all these new games that you couldn't play before that now it's time to buy and play. Yeah, and I don't yeah. mean a burden personally. 
I mean a financial burden, yeah, yeah. right? You're not outside of mining, you're not making money on it. But but that's a really important point to make because mining is such a great example of how when something makes you money, all of a sudden, even if you are an actual gamer, you're willing to pay so much more for it because it helps offset the cost. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? So the kinds of margins that Nvidia can make on something like a gray super chip are going to look really attractive to their shareholders and the kinds of margins they can make on some RTX 4060 even if it seems completely unreasonable to you and to me are going to look really unattractive and as the proportion of this business shrinks on the gaming side and grows on the data center side their shareholders are going to look at them and go Hey guys, um, what are you doing? Yeah, are, are you should you even be making consumer GPUs anymore, or shipping all the silicon, all the wafers you can get from TSMC or Intel for that matter? That's going to be interesting. Jensen said their next gen manufacturing node is looking good. Should you just be booking all of it for AI and completely ignoring gaming? And I don't think Nvidia wants to. That's what I wanted to say. Is I think the GeForce team really wants to build great gaming experiences. And I feel like they're a little bit hamstrung right now. I, I have for quite a while now. I, I assume you've kind of felt the same thing. You know, when you used to go to NVIDIA.com and the like main thing was drivers? GeForce drivers yeah. specifically. Yeah. Now, like even if you go to GeForce.com, which just redirects to NVIDIA.com slash GeForce, um, there's there's like the GeForce section, but then there's another banner above that, just like making sure that you don't forget that there's a separation between GeForce and NVIDIA, yep. and you can go to the main menu of for that, NVIDIA.com, which has nothing to do with GeForce. Even when you're on the specific GeForce page, they're like, just in case you didn't mean to be here, we've got you. Product solutions, industries. For you, whatever that means. Yeah, yeah like it's, I have always felt kind of weird about the NVIDIA site for a while now. And, because of that reason. And this really ties into what I was talking about before, where it used to be that the innovations that NVIDIA would build for their data center products would benefit gamers, mm -hmm. would make their way down to gamers. Yeah. But we've actually seen over, actually, wow, I guess the last couple of generations, uh, Volta was, an, was uh, an example of an NVIDIA chip that was built specifically not for gamers. Um, and then Hopper, I, I, as far as I can tell, is simply not for gamers at all. It just, it just doesn't have, it, it just doesn't have functional units you need for gaming uh, because it's laser focused on AI, right? Um, and wow. so we're not gonna, we're not gonna necessarily benefit from that that R and D money that comes from enterprise customers and goes towards building a bigger, better GPU that ultimately gamers also get to kind of tag along with, right? And so, I th yeah, I, I, I would, I don't know if I would like to see it, but it I, think it, I think it could make sense yeah. for NVIDIA to just say, yeah, this is a spin-off business, it's GeForce. They, they sort of, they, they, they buy innovation from NVIDIA. Essentially they're, they're a customer of NVIDIA, uh, in the same way that, uh, a Nintendo would be a customer of NVIDIA for the mm. processor and the switch. And the GeForce team is laser focused on building, you know, great drivers, uh, building great technologies to leverage the hardware from NVIDIA. Obviously they'd work very close together, but then they wouldn't have the burden of needing to make those same margins and they could get scrappier and they could they could take the fight to AMD and as Intel ramps up with Battle Mage and Celestial, their upcoming architectures, um, I think they could be more competitive because at the end of the day, right, every fanboy has gotta understand you don't want one to win. Yeah, yeah. Ever. That's not good. Whether we're talking the big three, Intel, AMD, NVIDIA, every single one of them has shown again and again and again that in the absence of compa of compa competition, <laughs> I'm very tired. In the absence of competition, 
the stagnation. The happens. first thing they'll do is stop refreshing products and ramp up the price. Yeah. Let's look for recent examples from each one. Shall we play a game? Sure. Do you want to go first or shall I go first? Uh, Intel pre AMD's resurgence in the like what would that have been like five six thousand series well, range? This number, this number is key. Four. Four. Okay. How many cores did you get? Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. Four four cores forever was was that was a very long term. Thing. That, that ought to be all anyone needs, Lee. <laughs> yeah, that's good enough. Yeah, that's a perfect example. And then if we look to AMD, the second Intel didn't have an HEDT a high-end desktop competitor. AMD simply stopped bothering releasing new Threadrippers, regardless of the commitments that they had already made, not just to their enthusiast and gamer customers, but to buyers of the STRX40 or whatever it was called, their, their last socket, their Ryzen 3000 Threadripper socket. They were just like, eh. It was basically done. There were samples out there. They just decided, yeah. Why bother? Threadripper Pro is more profitable. And this is why. So why bother? This is why, for years, as we've been rooting for AMD to push really hard, we've also been pointing out that they're not like, you know, the like magically benevolent good guys. There was that campaign that they ran a while ago where they had people with like uh, protest signs at PAX and stuff. Do you remember that? No. Oh, man. I, I don't think I, I saw that. It sounds cringe, though. I don't remember the name of the campaign. It sounds cringe. Uh, it, it was like resist, like resist AMD's, or resist Intel's, whatever. I wonder if I can find it. I think it's probably been, like, too long. And looking up anything that has to do with protest is just going to come up with a lot of news articles. So I think I don't think I'm going to find it. But, yeah, at, at, like, PAX West back in the day, I remember there being, like, genuine paid actors with protest signs that had, like, like resist, blah, 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 blah. And it was all AMD branding. And it was all about, like, buy AMD to resist Intel. It's like, uh, yeah, you guys would do the same thing. <laughs> yep. I do want you to do better because competition is good, but yeah, it doesn't. Okay, so then help. the last one is Nvidia. Nvidia, I honestly feel like hasn't sat on their laurels as much in a technological sense as the other brands, but they have definitely taken advantage of what they can extract cost-wise yeah. as much as possible. Yep, yeah. I mean, with them, in some ways, they're just kind of smarter about it. Because they're definitely doing it. And we talked about this when we did our tier list for the best GeForce GPUs. Which, by the way, I know I often ask you, have you watched the video? I know the answer is no. You should watch this one. I skipped through and watched the 8000 series because I like cared about that. You know how many people did that? <laughs> Was it a lot? <laughs> the uh, Well, not the 8000 series specifically, but the the... The retention chart on it's that video like is place. super weird. We actually had a debate internally before we started working on it for when we should start because we didn't start at the beginning. And we could have because the it, oh, there were okay. only a, a few generations of GeForce GPUs before the starting point. And we didn't start later. So it was actually pitched to me that we start more um, like like way way more recently, I, I forget I forget what the what the push was, but way more recently and and do do far fewer of them, and I picked FX, and I forget why. I think the rationale that I provided was it was right. It was the first DirectX nine GPU, and I think this is just my own personal biases. Because for me, PC gaming really started to get, you know, visually really good looking oh, wow. with DirectX 9. And looking back at it, I think it was just my own personal, that's when I got into gaming. And so we see that in the retention graph for this video, how many people got into gaming with 900 series and 10 series. Yeah. 
basically everything earlier is like, eh, skip, 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 skip. Yeah. Oh, what about this one that I bought that I'm really passionate about, or that's still in my gaming rig right now, and I love this thing. I've been using it for years. Isn't that hilarious? Just how few people that's cared. That's actually wild. These spikes are so, wow. Yeah, really extreme. I've never seen anything quite like this. That's very interesting. Yeah, it's really cool. Uh, anywho, what was, I what was I talking about again? Right. So with NVIDIA, it's been more of a slow boil. And we talked about it a fair bit here, where starting with the 600 series, this, this history is really important to understand when you look at NVIDIA's pricing strategy and you want to kind of get a better idea of where they're going in the future. So starting with 600 series, and okay, NVIDIA has code names for their GPUs. And I hate that the word GPU has come to mean graphics card because they are not the same thing. A GPU is a graphics processing unit and it's a chip. A graphics card is a board that contains a GPU VRAM, power delivery, display outputs, okay? So the GPUs, they have code names for these. And typically they will have the uh, a letter to indicate the architecture, like GK would be GeForce Kepler, or GA would be GeForce Ampere, okay? So they have a letter and then they have a number. And that number, the final digit, the lower that digit is, so if it's a zero, that is going to be the largest chip for that series. If it's a two, that's going to be a smaller one. If it's a four, smaller, six, smaller. I'm trying to remember how high they've gone in the past. But the point is, the higher that number goes, the smaller the actual die is. So sometimes you'll see two GeForce GPUs that have, let's say one has 5,000 CUDA cores and one has 4,000. But if you dig into, you know, the Tech Power Up GPU database or something like that, you'll find that they're both using the same chip. Well, some of those functional units might have been, some of those CUDA cores might have been uh, damaged in manufacturing, or they might have just been turned off to hit a lower power profile or to 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 create segmentation between two products so that you know this one doesn't perform too close to the other one but other times you'll see that two products are using completely different dies because there's only so many CUDA cores on a die even if it's perfect and it only makes so much sense to cut them down before that's just a, a, a broken product and the power profile wouldn't make any sense for this you know, more budget oriented product. So that's why you design these different sizes of dies. Finally getting there, um, with Kepler, that was the first time we saw NVIDIA launch a flagship 80 series GTX you know, product, a top tier product with not the top tier die. Now we had seen before a top tier die but with, no, it wasn't the first time. Okay, I'll talk a little bit about that other one later. Um, we had seen not a top tier die, uh, or we had seen a top tier die, but not all of it. So a slightly right. cut down one. And yeah. that, would, that would be due to yields, right? They, they just couldn't get enough fully working ones to make it economically viable. But we hadn't seen them launch a flagship GPU with, uh, with, with a cut down, with a not top tier die. And then we didn't get big Kepler until 700 series. So we got Kepler and then we got Kepler again, something we, again, I don't think had actually seen in the past, but that's with an asterisk because the 9,000 yeah. 9, series was a little bit more complicated where 8,000 series was awesome, G80. So that's eight, zero. So that was a big die was the 8,800 GTX and the 8,800 Ultra was uh, kind of usurped by G92, which was uh, a shrunk and just like way more efficient, even though it was smaller, um, die. So the 8800 GT came out and kind of made the GTX look pointless from a cost perspective. And then they tweaked that and released the 9800 GTX, which was not a big die, but there wasn't a big die version. It was just a, it was just a, a really weird time for, for NVIDIA because they couldn't innovate as easily as they had been able to before that because they couldn't just keep shrinking the manufacturing process. That was kind of where we started to ask the question, is Moore's law dead? Uh, you know, is GPU innovation going to slow down in a big way? And, and it has. 
And that's the same thing where I'm talking about them boiling the frog in terms of slowing things down. There were definitely times when they could have probably pushed harder, but started stretching, you know, how long a GPU generation should stick around for from, you know, I mean, they were, they were launching new stuff like eight, 10 months after say, like previous generation sub one year windows for a bit there. And then it went to a yearly cadence and then it went to, well, I mean, 18 months is fine, right? Two years, two years seems okay. By the way, I found it, it was called the AMD uprising campaign. The Silence whole thing was the GPU. About, like joining the rebellion and hashtag better red and stuff. So uh, it was, it was a weird campaign. I, I did not like it. It is what it is. Not the first odd marketing we've seen. And not the last. Moving on, next topic. Oh. Should we do three merch messages? We never did breakfast. There was one of these for you. Oh. Um, yeah, let's do a few merch messages. Dan, are you can you hear us? Oh yeah, of there course. Oh it's Daniel Besser. Hi. Oh wait, I'm supposed to explain merch messages. That's right. Merch messages. They're these things. They're how you interact with the show. We launched a new product on the store. Hey, Dan, do you have the capability of showing people the new product? Technically, so. yes. Uh, oh. Can we use AJ for this? Oh, this is going to be embarrassing. What? I mean, I guess we could show it on the website. Yeah, this might take a minute, though. Um, what? I have a couple it's on fine. the table. We could just show them with a camera. Uh, that, it, you know what? I'm going to propose something even jankier. <laughs> oh, I love it. It's the fleece lined jacket. It's a sweater. It's a jacket. It's launching in June because we just love our Australian community so much. Actually, it's because we only launch things when they're ready. And this is when it happens to be ready. Wait, no, it's, it's a shirt or a jacket. Oh, shirt meets jacket. Excuse me. Yeah. Um, I could show it with the producer cam. It's 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 pr it's pretty cool. It's very warm, but it still looks, you know, just kind of kind of like a shirt. Um, you know, it's nice for going out. I would I would say on a fall day, going for a walk in the park, you're not going to reach for anything else once you have one of these. Um, it looks sharp. Yeah, yeah, looks looks really sharp. We tried to make this reversible. Fun story. It did not work. Oh, yeah. Yeah. We thought it would be really cool if this kind of like camo, uh, camo stripey inner material was actually wearable on the outside. And it was not. <laughs> yeah. We, we do have a reversible garment coming soon, but it is, it is not this day. Uh, anywho, if you want to pick up one of these or anything else, you know, water bottle, screwdriver, um, and stick locks have been really popular as well. Cool. Then head over to lttstore.com and in the checkout, cool. right? In the cart, dang it. <laughs> in the cart, a box will appear giving you the option to write a merch message. You can send a shout out for one of your friends or your mom who happens to watch the WAN show because she's Luke's mom. <laughs> uh, you, can, uh, you can ask our producer a question. Uh, you can also post a question in hopes that Dan will choose your question to be addressed later on WAN Show After Dark, which there may not be any After Dark because it is the morning where yeah. we are. Yeah, that's, that's very unusual. <laughs> um, anyway, the point is, don't do super chats. You know, don't do Twitch bits or whatever else. Do merch messages because then, even in the event that we don't get to your message, you get your order in the mail, and it's going to be quality. And we do not talk nearly enough about how well reviewed our products are. Like just about every product on LTT store, four and a half stars and up. And we don't we don't curate this stuff. We believe in transparency. Like you go on the it's also a lot of reviews. You go on the screwdriver page. There's yeah, it's it's it really is like very funny to me when haters talk about what a failure the you know backpack or screwdriver were or whatever did you see 6900 reviews on screwdriver yeah nice and you know backpack no one would be stupid enough to buy this backpack it has almost 2500 reviews they didn't they didn't come from nowhere they weren't they're, they're not generative ai 
reviews, guys. These are these are real reviews from real people that are thrilled with it because it's a freaking awesome backpack. Um, all right, Dan, want to hit us with some merch messages? Yeah, sure thing. Um, let's see. First one here. Hey, OLLD, would you ever want to fly to space? How for how long and where would you like to go? Uh, the International Space Station, the moon, maybe Mars. What? What was the question? Do you want to go to space? space? Yeah. Definitely. Is it wondering where in space you want to go? Okay. <laughs> would you ever want to fly to space? Yes, for sure. How long? I don't know. Ever? Uh, where would you like to go? All well, of not them? forever. Yeah, why not? Come on. You're not going to go to space forever. I'd be down. No. <laughs> would you vacation to Earth? I'd be sad. <laughs> Give a better answer. Um, <laughs> I don't know. I would. I would love to do a one-year stint. Obviously, this is never going to happen. A um, year? Yeah, because then you get the you get a special thing. I don't remember what it's called. It'd be sweet. Destroyed bone gamer. density. <laughs> you actually it's an achievement. You, you, get, wanna... you get a one-year achievement. <laughs> it's basically that. I, I think know. You get some special badge or something. <laughs> I never uh, thought about it that way. But oh my. Oh my, there we go. My laugh is very obnoxious. Um, it's called muscle atrophy. There's ways to stave that off. It, it, the scarier thing is your bones, um, but you address both in the same way. You do it by working out. Um, <sighs> it's not going to happen. A year. Well, yeah, but answer the question proper. Okay, where would you go? You just would want to orbit or what? I think whatever gets you the most patches. Yeah, probably. Uh, I think, I think if, I mean, okay, if we want to think about it that way, if you could be the first, I think if you could be the first to step foot on Mars, that'd be sick. That'd be sweet. But if we're assuming that isn't so much of a thing. Yeah. Um, I don't think I'd want to do the whole Mars thing. It's really far. I think I'd be far more likely to go to a moon base and then come back. Cause spend it's like, more time. Yeah. It is actually like, wild how much closer it is yeah and it's kind of wild how much closer the iss is compared to the moon i think a lot of people don't consider that as well yeah the moon is like a lot further not that close yeah it's like <laughs> genuinely not but yeah I, I think some i think like an actual lunar base would be pretty sweet because yeah that's honestly i don't see the difference between the iss and a lunar base being all that much in terms of cost or in terms of no like, like the experience Really? No, sorry, I sorry. I don't You're see You're high. No, 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 wait, wait, wait. No, you, I don't sir? see the, I don't see that. Wait, wait, wait. I, are I, I said high. it wrong. I don't that see the benefits. That building back there? You're higher than that building. <laughs> I don't see the benefits of being on the ISS or another orbiting station being much higher than being on a station that is on the surface and then I see probably being able to exit the station and go wander around the moon being much more likely than spacewalks because yeah. spacewalks are like super super coveted. Right. And even a bunch of astronauts that don't go up are never allowed to do spacewalks. Yeah. So like I think it's much more likely if you're actually on. I I would I would 100% want to just like I mean not golf because you'd never find the ball, but like I would I would want a sports ball on the moon. Putting a little tracker in a golf ball and then just whacking it would actually be pretty cool. <sighs> You'd never like I'd want to get it back though. Like I'd want to see it go. And you would like it would just I assume anyway. I don't know. I've never been to the moon. It would moon. depend how hard you hit it. Because I mean the moon has grat like it's gonna theoretically, unless you can get like escape velocity from the moon. Yeah, no, I'd wanna like no, I just I just would it go around the horizon potentially? Like I don't know. It depends how hard you hit it. I mean you wouldn't be able to see it anymore. Yeah, definitely. Almost certainly. Yeah. That's that's the bigger concern, I yeah. think. Uh but like no, I'd wanna throw like a football. The ISS has no you know? gravity that can affect experiments. Yeah, but like, I'm a big dummy. I don't think I'm doing experiments. Yeah, no, I mean, <laughs> yeah, no, I, I would just, I, I would want to. I'd love to help. I would want to play sports ball. Like, I would just, I, I'd want to see how fast I could whip a baseball in, like, almost no atmosphere. Yeah. Right, because there's also no no wind resistance essentially compared to Earth anyway. Jake mentioned playing badminton on the moon. Yeah, exactly. Like, right. That'd be pretty sick. That'd yeah. Be actually, very fun. Or not fun. It yeah, might be or, not or fun at all. Because it would be really slow. No, it would be fast. What slows down the, the shuttle is air resistance. Uh, 
like it okay so there's Gravity's only so low though. there's only certain shots where it falls so, down yeah if you were the smashes would be terrifying yeah if you hit a smash no one would be able to stop it <laughs> that's pretty great that'd be freaking fun anyway okay yeah, hit me again sweet. dan sure thing hello luke and linus how do you think ai will affect gaming in the near future do you think it will be uh, do you think it will make them lazy and slap it everywhere instead of polishing the games or will it be more conservatively used i think i curated both. this for a specific reason mm. and it was the word lazy uh. because ai is not lazy what it is is a tool and i think that we're going to see very lazy implementations of ai and luke and i talked about this actually a little bit earlier on the show where uh, yeah i think developers are going to look at this ai buzz and go okay how can we cram ai into our game now so that we can put it on the box and hopefully sell a few more units to nerds who want to try out AI conversations with their waifus or whatever. I think that's going to be a genre that's going to lean heavily into AI oh, and yeah. be an innovator in the space, for better or for worse. Yep. Um, but in much the same way that you know we could look at, oh, man, what would it, what would be a what would be a comparable comparable feature? Okay. Now I can't come up with anything right now because my brain is bad, but. AI is a tool. So the fact that someone uses a hammer, that doesn't make them lazy. Like the fact that they use a hammer instead of putting the nails in by pushing them with their thumbs, that's not laziness. So as long as they're still working hard, there's nothing inherently lazy about using a better tool. Now their AI well, has some ethical... Yeah questions around it that need to be answered and, and and some genuine like something that could be interpreted as lazy because i mean you've talked about this too right if you were going to play a single player game you wouldn't want all the dialogue to be written by ai yeah because you'd want it to be more focused and like efficient almost not 100 yeah. percent, but like every word should have a reason for being there those types of things um so i don't know i, th I think you're going to see a huge range of this which shouldn't be too surprising if you've experienced much of the gaming industry i'm sure we'll see some like battlefield game or something that just has absolutely atrocious dialogue because it's all just ai generated or something and we are going to see maybe not laziness this, this is the other reason i really didn't like this word because lazy seems to apply it to the actual devs themselves uh, whereas i think it's more likely to be a cost-cutting measure yeah from management yeah right so uh what was uh shoot i've Any i've, examples I've forgotten i've forgotten but there was some game where the box art was apparently almost certainly procedurally generated oh uh did you did you see this i, did you hear I there about has this? also been games where their box art was just stolen from people but yeah i'm, I'm yeah in this sure case that, that it, it looked like it was procedurally generated because like the guy had like six fingers and there were little details and some artists kind of broke down you know what's what's going on here and what makes it obvious duke nukem the duke nukem really? remaster yeah yeah pull, pull it up pull it up have a look sorry guys we don't have a good way of screen sharing right now so please uh you know pull this up for yourself yeah here we go duke nukem remaster ai box art is uh, what luke typed in and apparently the the artist who was involved has you know used generative ai for artwork in the past as well so in this case, was it laziness? Was it an extremely tight budget? You know, did they give the go ahead to use AI? I haven't looked into this any further yet. So take this for the, you know, ignorant speculation that it is. But I don't think it's fair to assume that it's just laziness. But I also don't think it's impossible. Yeah, this is pretty jank. I see why people were kind of annoyed about this. Yeah. Yeah. That's just like a hand like floating under the firearm. It's not even like in anything. This that's like not that's not a barrel. It just actually isn't. I don't know. That's weird. <sighs> yeah. Anyways, next up. 
can do and i guess this will be our last one for this section hi lld i'm 16 and do more robotics techie videos on youtube in the early days of ltt how did you stay motivated and how long in the future would you say youtube would still be a feasible career hmm needing to eat is a pretty good motivator i think we're also all pretty determined to like make this thing work yeah, I was, I mean, I've talked about this in the past before, but one of the major motivators for me was just that I was tired of working with people that I didn't, um, I didn't enjoy working with, whether it was reporting to people who I didn't think deserved their positions, who I didn't think were very smart, or whether it was having to collaborate with people who were obvious nepotism hires and mm -hmm. had no valuable skills to bring to the table whatsoever. You know, I wanted a company that was not built like that. And the only way to get that is to start my own. And, be, and the only way to get it and be sure it won't go away is to start yeah, my own. Fair enough. Yeah. And so I just really needed this thing to work. Um, you know, Ivana, I also just generally bet really heavily on it. And so, you know, especially once we acquired the Langley house, it's, I mean, it's, it's funny to look back at it now, but we thought we were buying at the peak at like yeah. the, the highest conceivable, you know, housing pricing ends up, we got a stellar deal or whatever, but we didn't know that at the time. Mm -hmm. So we thought we were basically putting everything we had into this company. Um, and we, and we just really needed it to succeed. And then there were multiple phases where we kind of did the same thing again. When we bought the office, we thought the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> that we were buying at the peak and it couldn't possibly go any higher. So we, we thought we were completely betting the farm and we needed this to succeed or like going back to our jobs, there was no possible way we were paying this office mortgage. That wasn't happening. Right. So yeah, eating major motivating factor. Um, as for how long in the future, did I think YouTube would still be a feasible career? I'll tell you this. We started LinusTechTips.com, the forum, before we actually launched Linus Media Group, the company. And LinusTechTips.com is maybe not main reason, but at least half of its main reason for existing is in case YouTube just decides, yeah. you know what, forget about this channel anymore. I mean, I, we didn't have a contact at YouTube at that time. We didn't, we didn't know that they would continue to take the creator community seriously. We didn't know if they would just you know, cut your AdSense payment or, or maybe you get three strikes out of nowhere or take it or take it away entirely. Like we didn't know what the plan was for the platform, right? We were just guessing. Um, so at the time, no, I, I, I would, I would, I would take every deal. I would make every video thinking this could be the last one. And I don't think that really changed until you know, three, four, five years in. Really? I mean, even now it still feels sketchy because of like just dealing with algorithmic throws all the time. Like, mm -hmm. I don't know. It's a, it's a very unsettling industry to work in. It just is. Yeah, that's a good point. Luke was telling me he had some meetings with some creators that um, were I don't know if bewildered is the right word, but just um, taken aback when he talked about how stressed we get about algorithmic changes or about, um, you know, whether uh, just the fear we have for our survival. And they're like, well, I thought you were past that point. And it's like, I don't think everybody, anybody ever gets past that yeah. point. That's the thing about um, like exponential decay right is no matter how high you start everyone ends up at zero there's a near infinite graveyard of extremely massive talented. extremely successful very talented creators and channels and all that kind of stuff that were household names on youtube that are effectively just gone that are in a lot of cases still making content you won't see them in your recommendation. Feels like it though. can really happen to anyone. Really, anyone. I, I, I've seen channels with with millions of subscribers that get hundreds of views. It's like, oh man. 
And in some cases, <sighs> in some cases they changed the content and it's just not working anymore. Yep. In some cases they didn't change the content and that's contributing to it not working anymore. Mm -hmm. And in other cases, I'm looking at it going, I can't really tell the difference. Um, you know, uh, I, 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 the point is not to to name and shame. No. But this person in particular did like a, a series. Um, or wait, is this? Is that the right one? Mm. I think I know what one you're talking about. Oh, here we go. Here we go. This one. This one. Yeah. Um, let me just make sure because I don't want to... Mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. Ugh, I don't know. But basically... I might not name it. Yeah, yeah. There was a creator that was doing real amazing and then just kind of completely fell off the map. I'm talking like her top video has over 50 million views. 11 years ago and there's multiple videos here with 10 million views and more doing challenges and stuff and then just you know she she's talked about this i think if the, if i'm remembering correctly she's talked about how it felt like she just disappeared overnight algorithmically and again this is a channel with millions of subscribers nobody Nobody is nobody is safe. Yeah. Um, let me just see. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yes. Okay. It's Glozell. Um, so she did an interview talking about how she went broke, uh, shared some advice for young creators, and um, yeah, being yeah, this is this is great. Being broke with millions of subscribers, she shares her story of hardship. Yeah. Yeah, it's a, it's a really it's a really interesting fall, right? Because it, it it's not the type of content that I consume, so I'm not really qualified to evaluate yeah. whether you know she changed or or didn't change or what what the problem was that caused this precipitous decline in viewership. But no one's no one's safe. That's that's the whole point. Um, so we're, we just need to, we need to keep reinventing. We need to keep pushing and we can never take our foot off the gas because if we do, we die. It's, uh, I, I, I often use shark analogies internally, stop swimming, die. Yeah. Yeah. Like actually though. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So I think we go back to news. Sure. Why not? Those, yeah. Those give me a yeah. couple additional topics. All right. Uh, secret gigabyte backdoor. Uh, security researchers at Eclipsium released findings showing millions of gigabyte motherboards were sold with a UEFI bootkit containing an insecure backdoor. Eclipsium says the hidden code is meant to be uh, innocu an innocuous tool to keep the motherboard's firmware updated, but it's been implemented insecurely, potentially allowing the mechanism to be hijacked. On Windows machines, the program writes a Windows.exe embed into the firmware to in the firmware to disk in the System32 folder and runs it. The oh, exe sets wow. itself up as a Windows service and attempts to fetch and an executable from one of the URLs. That is the that is brutal. Uh, one URL uses HTTP, which is easily for an attacker to intercept, and other links, which do use HTTPS, are similarly vulnerable due to poorly implemented remote server certif certificate validation. Wow, okay, so let's uh, let's let's do a real quick summary here. In the firmware, yeah, on this motherboard, they have they have a tool that allows them to update and keep updated the uefi bios okay. which sounds cool which is helpful. really cool yes but the firmware actually can just write an exe to the system 3d folder which disguises i as want a windows service i want to know how microsoft allows random exes to be written to the system 32 folder <laughs> to be clear i'm not saying gigabyte is innocent here yeah i'm just that's messy I'm, I'm saying that this is clearly a breakdown that has multiple contributing actors here. Yeah. 
Oh, wow. Okay, so one note, which is probably understood by most, but because this program is within the firmware, it is difficult for consumers to remove. Okay. But the next note, at least 271 different models of motherboard are affected, including the most recent Z790 and X670 SKUs. Holy crap. There is no current evidence of the vulnerability being exploited. This is a pretty niche thing. I wouldn't be surprised if most places were unaware that it existed. A day after the story broke, Gigabyte has apparently rolled out updated firmware to mitigate the issue, including updates for older motherboards that are affected. But That's the problem cool. is that there's going to be literally tons of people that don't update because people mm, very, very rarely Millions, if not hundreds of thousands of boards out there that will never get these updates. And never even know this is a problem. I mean, I, I have to. Well, wait. Could they use their? <laughs> could they use their updater tool? Oh, to like force an update. That's Maybe. a good question. They might actually be able to kind of solve the problem. That's a that's a really good that's a really good question. Um, guys, uh, that's not in our doc. Let let us know, float plane chat. Uh, in the meantime, though, our discussion question here is. How would you rate Gigabyte's handling of the issue? I mean, hmm. the issue has existed for years, but... They probably didn't know. They mitigated it really quickly. What I'm assuming happened is Eclipsium found it, told Gigabyte, allowed Gigabyte to hmm. fix it, but then still wanted to break the news. That makes sense. So they launched the fix and the news at the same time. But they did fix it, yeah. which, is, which is good. Yeah. Um, but they put in a back door, which is, which is bad. Good. Yeah. But the back door was not for, you know, sending your data to the CCP. It was for helping keep your firmware up to date. Yeah. Which, which is, is noble enough. Good. Yeah. But they didn't tell us, which, which is, is bad. bad. <laughs> 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 yeah, the, the good the good part is that they fixed it. Stuff like this is gonna happen. I, I don't wanna be the that guy that's just like excusing it, but um I think we also have to be somewhat realistic. Yeah. I feel like a lot of the time, coverage of problems with products forgets the human element. Did you kind of get what I mean by that? Yeah. Yeah, like this seems like, I mean, it, it seems like a mistake. It's not good. I wouldn't be happy about it if I was a consumer of a gigabyte motherboard that this affected. Um, but like, it's also fixed immediately. So... It's not like it's not like Gigabyte was like, yeah, that's um 271 models of motherboard. We don't feel like supporting some of these old motherboards. As far as I can tell, at least from yeah. the notes in here, they updated everything. And as long as you do your own due diligence, or maybe this thing can auto update itself. Yeah, but um, I mean, huh, that's a really good point because that's one of those things that worked out this time, but wouldn't necessarily have. I mean, look at Spectre and Meltdown. Yeah, Intel was basically just like. Eh, it's been a long time. That stuff's legacy. Forget it. And that's not cool. I get it. But that's not cool. Yeah. Um, and if this, if we hadn't found this for another five years, would they have gotten updated? Probably not. Probably not. Probably not. And so, yeah, good. You know, good guy Gigabyte. It, you know, dealing with it. But also, it's far better to just not do that in the first yeah, place Yeah, for sure i just like i don't know it's good if a company exists for a long enough period of time something like this is going to happen yeah we've uh uninfamous alex says we forget the human element because we're treated so poorly um anti-consumer market it's become uh, uh yoda is writing into the, yeah, the yeah, yeah, show yeah. here yeah. and you know what yeah i you know i i get it uh and i think that's you know, I think that's pretty, I think that's pretty fair in a lot of cases, but I also think that, you know what, maybe part of it is just that I, I get to, I get to be face to face with the people who build these products sometimes and knowing that they're trying really hard makes me more appreciative of the things that do go well mm -hmm. sometimes. And it's not in like a, it's, it's not in a, like a, Oh, I'm, you know, compromised kind of way. Like, it's it's not about money changing hands. Like I remember getting a pretty different perspective on Intel when I went to the Optane launch event. It was super data center focused, 
but some of the gaming folks who were involved, like directly involved in bringing Skull Trail to market, that was their super cool like dual socket enthusiast thing that was really expensive and like kind of dumb. But, it was awesome though. But very cool. Uh, were there and just talking about how hard they push internally for these cool skunk works projects and stuff like that. And it just, they didn't, they didn't pay me any money or anything like that. It just, you know, you meet people and you get a better understanding of what they're about. And you learn that even these soulless companies and the shareholders, I, I have not changed how I feel about shareholders yeah, 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 for sure. at all. Yeah. Shareholders are, 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 they're, a necessary evil, I think, is the nicest thing I can say about shareholders. Uh, for public companies in particular, where the only the only outcome they want, typically speaking, is more money, right? Um, so I haven't changed how I feel about them. But the actual workers, the actual people, the engineers, the, the designers, the janitors, it doesn't matter. The people who are working on bringing us these products, a lot of the time, they're really passionate. They, they actually love what they do. I, another really surprising moment for me was when I went to Micron. And that was a sponsored video. So, you know, take this for whatever, whatever. You can talk about what a shill I am or whatever, but that has nothing to do with it. Um, I was just blown away by how excited these people were to make better memory and to get a chance to talk about it. Yeah, that's the other thing, guys. That's these, a big one. These are not people. professional actors who are pretending to be so happy dappy working at Micron so that I'll make a nice video about them. It's not. It's not like that. These were. These were like the people who actually work on this stuff, and you can tell when someone's passionate because you ask a question and they talk for ten I minutes. I was going to say they won't stop talking about it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Finally, someone has asked me this. Yeah. Do you know how long I toiled on this particular problem? <laughs> and, you know, other than my direct manager, everyone else in my life, I'm bound by NDA, yeah. right? Like, I'm just so thrilled to be talking to somebody about this, you know? And it's it's so cool, right? And, it, like, it was the same at the Intel Design Lab um, that I visited in... Um, in Tel Aviv, right? Like it, these people were just, you know, in some cases, the products were honestly not ones that I personally enjoyed. Sure. Yeah. But they were really proud of how they, you know, set a target and, you know, in collaboration with management who was beholden to shareholders. But this team, you know, damn it, they couldn't control that. But they set a target and dang it, they hit it, you know, time and time again. Um, and this this isn't a fab team, so Intel's had a lot of challenges shrinking their process nodes, but this was uh, like a chip design team. And and they, they were just proud. They were just proud of the work they were doing. I'm like, that's cool. You know, that's really cool. And I want to I wanna support that. And I've got to understand that there's a lot of people watching when we make a video. And some of them are the consumers, and we need to talk to them about whether you should or shouldn't actually buy this thing. And some of them are the shareholders. Um, and some of them are the people who actually designed these products. And, you know, I just, I want to show respect. Um, and I think we've taken some criticism recently for how we, how we show both sides of a product. But I think that's really important. We should appreciate what's good. I mean, do we, do we want to get so jaded and cynical that we, that we just can't appreciate the good? of the tech that we can't just take joy in how cool this stuff is anymore. There's also, and I, I've talked to you about this, but this is actually something that has consumed a surprisingly large amount of my thoughts lately, which is I've noticed this, I feel like it's surprisingly recent, but maybe I just haven't been super tuned in. Uh, but I've noticed a trend where a lot of the audience is very intent on all of the reviewers, whether written or, or video or whatever, all saying the same thing. They want everyone to say the exact same thing. Hmm. I think that's super bad and very dangerous. Interesting. So My reasoning is too for much that, group think going on right now. I think there is definitely too much group think going on right now. My reason for that is I think it's beneficial not only to the audience, 
but to all the reviewers as well, regardless of what medium they have, to have reviewers taking different approaches, trying different things, coming to slightly different conclusions, and then you as the audience check out a bunch of different pieces of content and make up your own mind based on these different approaches. That right. is how I think it should work. That is how I think it has worked for a really long time. So when you absorb some piece of content, whether you're reading it or watching it or listening to it or whatever, and then go to a different one and see a slightly different take. And all of a sudden, one of them has to be right. Yeah. And one of them has to be wrong. Yeah. I don't think that's good. Right. I think that's bad. Um, so just want to throw that out there. I think that's like actually extremely bad. And I think this is one of those situations. And I, I hazard to say this type of stuff, but like you don't want that. Yeah. Like I think you're 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 chasing the wrong thing. I, I, I think that if you get to the result of what this thing is, it's going to be just bad for everybody because you're gonna get crazy consolidation. There will be less reviewers, there will be and then that will result in less things being found and it, it's just I mean, I think it's a pretty clear, I think I've always been consistent. More competition is more better. Yes. And we can't say that about hardware manufacturers and not say and that then, ourselves. And then go, oh, oh, but, 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 but we need to be the only reviewer that you uh, listen to. Yeah. No one voice should ever, ever be the only one in your ear. That's always bad every single time. It, it, will, it will never work out well. And that's one of the reasons that we have tried to be so collaborative with the rest of the tech community. I mean, I think recently we've talked about how obviously, you know, we're trying to build our organization to build the best possible content yeah, we can. You have to. And, you know, if uh, if people are finding it hard to deliver the same quality of content, then like, sorry. Uh, you know, Bullshit. find a different angle, right? Yeah. You know, and, you know, let's go. But we've also tried to work hard to, you know, build a spirit of collaboration in the tech community as well. I mean, you name a tech creator and we've probably collaborated with them at some point. Or if we haven't, we've probably invited them to LTX this year. There's actually a lot of creators that I have never even met that are coming to LTX this year. And I'm super excited. Yeah, we want to LTX is wild. We want to bring people together. We want to, I want to see collabs. I think it's going to be really exciting. It's going to be really fun. Um, and that's because we're putting our money where our mouth is. We're literally spending like six figures on creator travel and hotels for LTX. We're spending a freaking lot of money um, to put our money where our mouth is and, and show that we actually do care about this. You guys should have as many voices as possible uh, when you're trying to evaluate what to spend your hard earned money on because nobody is going to see things exactly the way you do. And if they do, you got to kind of look in the mirror and go, are these actually my thoughts? Or are these just someone else's thoughts? And I'm just parroting them. Am I actually doing any critical thinking here? That's something. Never stop critically thinking for yourself. Um, I realize I never kind of came back to have I buried the hatchet with NVIDIA. Uh, someone asked, have I, have I resolved things with Jensen? I haven't talked to Jensen in many years. I think the last time I talked to Jensen was just to like introduce myself at an event or something like that. Like I've, I've never really spoken with him at length or anything. Um, but I definitely had some issues with our previous NVIDIA rep who simply um, revealed to me, regardless of the apology that went out to Hardware Unboxed afterward, revealed to me through his actions that he didn't respect media, didn't properly understand our role in keeping NVIDIA accountable, uh, felt that we were simply part of NVIDIA's marketing apparatus, and... Um, and at that point, I just, uh, you know, I never apologized for anything that I said. I think maybe an apology was expected, but um, I wasn't going to apologize because at the end of the day, I didn't say anything that was wrong. And, um, you know, it was it was my team, my group, uh, my, my media community that was disrespected. Um, you know, I don't owe you an apology for calling you out for being disrespectful. Like, that's actually not how that works. And that particular rep is no longer with the company. Um, 
so that they are retired now and I met my new rep so they they started just a few weeks ago I think uh, so before you before you jump in with conspiracy theories about how we're you know that's oh that's why our video was you know more balanced for the 4060 or whatever no that's just how we're going to make videos where we want to look at everything we want to look at it from shine a light on it from every angle um so this is my first time meeting them but they basically came in and were like hey i want to i want to have a fresh start here and i kind of went that's nice uh <laughs> it was it was a tough meeting it wasn't you know, all sunshine and rainbows. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, there's some, there's some, <laughs> there's some, there's some, some old wounds to deal with there. Yeah. There's been, uh, this is why it's always so funny to me to be told that I'm some kind of NVIDIA shill. I like good products. And so that's not a bias. <laughs> yeah. That's not being a fanboy. Yeah. That's just evaluating things and then seeing how they are and forming an opinion. That's not, that's, that's not bias. If something is good and you think it's good, that's, that's just fact, right? Like that's, and, and, and again, though, back to what we said before, my fact is not necessarily your fact, right? If I love this product for gaming and you use some kind of professional software and it's been, they've had this bug for three years that completely ruins your life and you need to use something else, that's yeah that's your life right like that's that's your perspective and that's totally valid right but for me it doesn't it doesn't make me a fan to say this is a good product that works really well uh, it's expensive but you got to give it to them it works really well um where was i going with this i totally can't remember because my brain is bad uh, right. Yeah. I always get a kick out of it when people think I'm some kind of NVIDIA shill. NVIDIA has done so little sponsored and paid work with us over the years that I don't even think they would register as like, uh, like how many decimal places would we have to get to? So you've got percentages of our total, total overall income. And then you've got like a decimal of a percentage. I don't even think they'd be at one decimal. I think they'd be at two. Like they are bit functionally. Like most years there's nothing. Yeah. They've only worked yeah. with us like twice. Yeah. Like actually. Like functionally negligible. Yeah. Um, and which made it particularly funny to me when I heard through the grapevine back after the hardware unbox thing that NVIDIA was putting pressure on their partners that they give marketing funds to, to not spend those funds with us. Because even accounting for pass-through, it's like negligible, like not a non-factor. So they they tried to put this, allegedly tried to put this, I heard from two, two sources though. They tried to put this financial pressure on us yeah. after the Hardware Unbox thing. That's another thing is like, they apologized to Hardware Unbox. I never got an apology for that. Um, so there's been some, I am not a fan of NVIDIA and the way that they do business. And so I made that very clear. I made that extremely clear to our new rep that this relationship is not going to be repaired by coming in and saying, you know, it'd be great. A fresh start. Uh, yeah, yeah, sure. I guess that would be great. Um, but you're going to have to figure this out because as far as I can tell, a lot of NVIDIA's behaviors, are not as simple as one rep going rogue, disrespecting the media and engaging in these mafia thug business tactics. Um, I've seen NVIDIA engage with their manufacturing partners in the same way, their board partners. Um, I've, I've seen NVIDIA engage with their retail partners in the same way. NVIDIA is a cutthroat company. They are competitive, they compete and Maybe that's a big part of the reason they win so much, but that doesn't mean that they can't be respectful while they're, while they're competing. That doesn't mean they can't share some of the spoils of war. You know, we saw the way that they've squeezed margins for their, for their board partners, for example, over the years. And so I basically said, look, I think that realistically, a lot of the problems I had with NVIDIA are not as simple as a fresh start. 
Um, I appreciate anything that you think that you can do. And what I can tell you is I will, I will have an open mind. Um, you know, I will, I will try to have a fresh start, but you're going to have to understand that there's going to be more to this than just the way that you treat me. Right. I, I, I just, I love this. I love this saying or expression or whatever it is where, you know, a man that's kind to you and rude to a waiter is a rude man. Right. Um, and I experienced that a lot being, uh, being a prominent creator in the tech community. It is pretty easy for me to get prompt service on something, um, which is a big part of the reason that we do secret shopper, um, which is a big part of the reason that we are introducing our secret shopping, our sponsors series, which is going to be kicking off very soon. I believe all of the background has been done, but the person who's working on that has other projects. So it's taking some time to get everything compiled and turn it into a script. But I'm I'm really, really excited to bring that series to you guys uh, because we want to we want to know, like, are we just getting good treatment because NVIDIA wants to project being a nice guy through their treatment of us and turn us into fans? It's something we've always got to watch out for. And, you know, maybe this is maybe I'm jaded and cynical. Maybe uh, maybe I'm just experienced. Sometimes I can't tell the difference, but it's the kind of thing that brands do. They do it oh, all yeah. the time. And oh, that's not being, that's just being realistic. And it was, it was funny because there was another classic brand move that got pulled on this trip that uh, I was a little frustrated with one of our team members for not being aware of. And then I kind of, you know, I kind of went, I, I talked to them yesterday and basically like I had said some, some pretty direct words um, previously. And I don't take any of them back. Um, you know, you you know who you are. It had to, you had to hear it. I, I want you to I want you to learn. I want you to get more experienced. I want you to 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 do better because like sandwiched a little better though. Yeah, but I could have I could have done a better job of the poop sandwich. Um, but you know, these are important life skills, regardless of whether you're going to work here forever or you're going to work somewhere else. You got to you got to learn these things. You got to take these with you. And so I'm glad I told you, but I could have been a bit nicer about it. But basically, <clears throat> what I said is like, look, brands have their agenda. You have your agenda, and you've got to keep these things separate. You've got to understand you don't work for them, and they are going to use every possible trick in the book to manipulate you into doing what they want. And in this case, it was a sponsored project that was supposed to happen while we were here. Uh, actually, it was a couple of things, but the, the, the one that started it was the sponsored project that was supposed to happen here with a big board maker where I, I wanted to see uh, a GPU manufacturing line. And I basically said, sponsorship deal or no sponsorship deal, I'm not going unless we're seeing a GPU manufacturing line. I want to see a GPU go start to finish, and That's then sweet. I want to power it on, kind of like what we did at the Micron factory. And in the lead up to the show, you know, I kept being told, okay, yeah, we haven't confirmed exactly what it's going to be. We haven't confirmed. We haven't confirmed yet. And I'm like, you need to get this confirmed. You have to get this confirmed. We are flying 11 hours around the world or whatever it is, and you got to get this confirmed before we go. <laughs> and I can see why it might not have seemed that urgent because we were going to Computex anyway. Yeah. Right. But when you're negotiating something, the more things you leave until the moment when you arrive, the more potential there is for what happened next, which is that on the day we were supposed to go and shoot this video, we were contacted in the morning and told, hey, we can't make the GPU manufacturing line work. But what we do have is a new model of GPU that you can show and some cases and um, some upcoming... All like extremely basic level, boring Computex content. Yeah. The like normal, normal con Computex content. Um, so yeah, the sponsor deal is still on, but uh, it's going to be this. And I kind of went, okay, I made this really clear. When I said before the show that the sponsorship deal is not on unless we are bringing content about GPU manufacturing to the people, I meant it. That's not 
it's not negotiable. It's not a conversation. I, I'm, I don't want to be talking about this right now because I already told you. And the thing is, like, I'm, I'm not trying to be, I'm not trying to be a jerk about it, but I am beholden to my boss. And I don't mean our incoming CEO. I mean, you guys, you guys are the boss. If I upload crap, you guys are going to downvote it or worse, you're going to not watch it. Yeah. And then we talked about, you know, exponential channel decay. That's going to happen. It's a fight for survival every day. If I bring you guys, regardless of sponsorship dollars, right? Like that's what I'm, you know, that's what ultimately I have to do. If I want to get sponsorship dollars, I have to find a way to cram those into a project that is, entertaining enough for you guys that you want to watch it regardless of that right so you know i will i will sometimes take a project that i would just love to do like i would just i would just love to see the micron factory tour that's actually a great example i would have wanted to go regardless of the money but i'll hold out i'll basically go no it's got to be paid um because realistically for something like that they're gonna they're gonna need a whole bunch of uh, like NDA, like type of Those privacy, tons of reviews. Yeah, privacy control over it anyway. So if they're going to expect all of that, then I'm sitting here going, well, then yeah, then you pay the sponsorship dollar, or I'm not going, even though I'm sitting there going, please, yeah, I want to go, please, please, <laughs> please do it, <laughs> right? Um, so, so that's what happened with this board maker. Is I basically went, look, I, I told you we're not going because my boss says that's not interesting enough. So we aren't going unless this is happening. And I think everyone was sort of taken aback, including the person on my team who kind of went, oh, when I said, okay, well, we're not going then. We're going to go shoot something else. And we ended up going to the Gigabyte booth where we shot that cool uh, Grace Super Chip video. That was actually, that was a lot of fun. And uh, later on in the week, we made another attempt at it. And whether it was, a miscommunication or whether it was another uh, effort to just get us on site so they could get us to talk about something else again. Um, we arrived and it wasn't a manufacturing line uh, or even a prototyping line, which is what I thought we just were going to see. I thought we were going to see a prototyping line. Oh. It was just like some PCBs and some finished GPUs and, uh, soldering iron. and a soldering iron, which is not how they do it which is not how they build GPUs at all. Yeah. Um, and so we, we shot a quick um, short for one of the channels and we just like left and, you know, maybe it was a miscommunication. Maybe it was, um, you know, maybe they just wanted to get us in there to talk about this other stuff they wanted to talk about. I'm not sure, but it was a, it was a really valuable learning experience, I think for the way that the way that brands will, will try to get you, close and we'll get you in the door and then once you're already there kind of go oh well sunk cost fallacy you might as well talk about this other thing because you know it'd be a shame you it a bunch even even when you do have a really solid agreement it's it's often attempted yep yeah we had we had an issue with a case manufacturer this year where we wanted to do something cool with one of their products um and they were showing it at this one location but we wanted to do something at the other location and they didn't want to give us the one that was at the one location for some reason. And they basically made us borrowing it contingent on going to their party, their, their event. Oh. And I was like, okay, I'll go, but I can't stay long because I have a commitment. I'm playing badminton tonight and I'm only going to go if there's food because, and I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to be a diva about it, but I am on my way out the door to get food before I go exercise. I cannot go to exercise before I've eaten. So I can't go to your event unless there's food there. I arrived. There was no food. There was like, like Some a, a dozen of the last hors d'oeuvre that nobody wanted yeah. left. And there was, um, and immediately they started trying to brief me on their like product that I didn't come there to talk about. Um, and then what's even worse is before we got a chance to do anything with the thing we borrowed, they asked for it back. And um, one of our team members uh went full just like errand person for them and like brought it back to them when we would have been going the next morning anyway and i was like so that was again you know like hey 
these are the moves brands pull. They try, they try and make you their beta and you can't, you can't be there for that. It's the answer is the answer is no. And it's not about being a jerk. It's about standing your ground. Right. And I don't know, maybe it's just like, is it like a, like a Canadian cultural thing? Just like wanting to be a people pleaser. Did I, did I used to be more like that? Have I just, no, have I just gotten, oh, well, okay then. I think, I think back in the day, the video would have been made, but I think for different reasons, yeah. I think back in the day we, we valued volume very highly. Yeah. So we would just get a lot of content out all the time. So like, uh, it's always it's always kind of funny to me when people talk about how much better our content used to be when we used to focus like on 60 quality videos from a show. What are you talking about? Yeah, sure, dude. We upload less now than ever. Um, we used to have a thing at CES where you had thirty minutes per appointment, and that included travel time. Yeah, which could be switching hotels. Yeah. <laughs> Like there, there was not time for for quality, my dude. Yeah, uh, man. Looking back at old videos, like there were certainly some fun and funny, just dragon energy things that happened. But I don't know about I don't know if quality is the right word to describe anything that we used to do compared to what we do today. Yeah. This is an impromptu topic. Sorry, I'm kind of blindsiding you with this. But I wanted to talk about why we didn't cover one of the big pieces of news at the show this year. This was another sort of having to having to draw a line in the sand. Uh, we were supposed to get seven videos this week, and we ultimately didn't end up making one of them because partly through my own error, we arrived at a booth and realized that the people that we were about to cover had ripped off the community oh. in the past. Yeah. And I had, yeah. um, you know, not intentionally, but I had been complicit. And um, that was not about to happen again. Yeah. And that, that's not going to happen again. So uh, one of the, one of the big things at the show was this super cool. And I saw it, I was briefed on it. It's super cool. But this collaborative case between Streetcom and Kalios that's capable of dissipating, uh, they say 600, but actually it's more like 700 watts passively, um, depending on um, the thermal output of your CPU and GPU. So it has two loops and they're identical, but they rate, I think the CPU one slightly lower just because most CPUs are not going to hit that level anyway or something like that. I, f I forget. There's some, there's some reason that one of them is like rated a little bit lower when they talk about the product overall. But actually, if you had a differently balanced system, it could, it could even dissipate a little bit more heat. Um, so I arrived. Oh, right. So first, let's talk about who these folks are. So Streetcom. Tons of respect. I uh, love those guys. They do just a gr just great, great job of manufacturing super sleek aluminum cases and accessories and stuff like that. Um, in fact, they make the test benches that we use for the lab. Uh, really cool modular test benches that like pack flat. Like awesome. Um, actually, oh, hold on. Yeah, is that, a that is Streetcom, right? Yeah, yeah, the open bench table. Yeah, that thing is sick. Uh, just have like a, is it Streetcom? Yeah, 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 it's Streetcom. Cool. Uh, so Streetcom makes that. Um, love those guys. Now let's talk about Kalios. Do you guys remember the passive like 300 watt or 350 watt case from like six years ago? Kickstarter campaign. Do you remember this thing? It was pumpless, which was super cool. So it's full of refrigerant. And then the heat from the CPU or well, I mean, or GPU and GPU, whatever, um, would force, uh, would, would cause the refrigerant to evaporate and then it would start moving and then it would condense and then it would, it would actually start flowing on its own without any kind of pumping system. So the whole thing was completely silent, super cool tech. They raised a quarter million dollars on Kickstarter, give or take, and then ghosted. Um, Nobody who like bought one of yeah, boosted. nobody who bought one of those original cases ever um, 
got anything for their money as far as I can tell. And this was a significant amount of money. This case was over $500 on average, right? Because remember Kickstarter, there's the different tiers depending on how early you, uh, how early you fund it. And I covered the case. In fact, I covered them twice. Once I covered the case, actually it might've been three times. I don't, I don't remember anymore, but I definitely covered it at least twice. I covered the case in our studio and tested it and it was amazing and super cool. And then I covered another collaborative project they were doing on like a smaller cube passive system later on at a trade show at CES or something like that. And I took a lot of, uh, so, okay. Yeah. People are, people are in the chat here. I thought they, I thought they collapsed. Well, no, they didn't. Um, Calios did existed before and still exists now. I mean, their main business is, um, uh, is B2B cooling solutions, like silent, um, passive cooling solutions. And they, they work in all kinds of different industries, including like, uh, they, they have some history in the aerospace industry, for example. Um, and so they, they, they had the experience with cooling and they had the, the backing, they had the reputation as a real company that made me comfortable promoting this as a product that genuinely would exist where they would overcome the challenges and actually deliver these to people. And they just didn't, they just didn't deliver them. And I want to tell both sides of the story here because I actually had the Calios founder and I also had the new CEO of Calios there in the booth with me. And they basically went like, look, we spent three times the amount of the Kickstarter backers trying to make this thing happen. There were challenges we didn't foresee. We were naive. Um, it was a smaller team and I'm sorry we didn't deliver anything, but uh, it was Kickstarter. And I kind of went, Okay. That's not really how that works. Um, but what about people's money? And they're like, okay, we have a solution for that. And I go, okay, I would like to hear your solution because I, I basically got the briefing and I told them we have two, we have two paths here. Either you tell me how you're going to make this right. And it's actually and I make, good. And I make a video about this. Yeah. Or you don't tell me how you're going to make this right. And I walk away and I'm not acknowledging your company here. Um, and they go, okay, no, no, we have a solution for this. For everyone who backed the original case, they will get a voucher for the full amount of their backing toward the new case. And I went on the surface, that sounds possibly pretty okay. To note that it's not a whole new case, though. So um, what's the delta here? Well, the new case can dissipate about double the heat. It's a and it's a much nicer looking design. It's lighter. However, however, the new case is priced according to its heat dissipation yeah. capabilities. Yeah. So they were offering a credit of five hundred and change, five hundred dollars, essentially. Uh, let's say let's say five seventy five towards a $1,000 case. And I'm sitting here going, um, this is interesting. Shot key in Twitch chat has a, has an uncharacteristically terrible take for Twitch chat. And that's really something. So you blackmailed them. No, I didn't blackmail them. That's not what blackmail is. You should go look up what that's blackmail is. Sort of what that is. Anyway. Um, it's amazing how confused people get sometimes. So, sorry, they offered, so they're offering, let's say a 600, let's round up. They're offering a $600 voucher for a thousand dollar product. And I kind of went, so are you serious right now? You took my money. Let's say hypothetically, I'm one of these buyers. You took my money, my significant amount of money six years ago. And you're coming back to me now saying, no, but we're really going to ship you something this time. All we need is double your money, more money. <laughs> um, needless to say, I wasn't 
happy with that. I, I didn't consider that acceptable. Uh, I said, I said, that's a good option that people should have. But at the end of the day, they need to also have the option to have their money back. Um, because the way that it works is if you're a real company that behaves like a real company, when you take someone's money and you don't ship them a product, then, then you should give them their money back. And they kind of went, yeah, but it was Kickstarter. It was, a, it was a small team. It was a, you know, offshoot Skunk Works project. And I go, okay, but like, this is your integrity we're talking about. I'm not talking about your legal obligations here. I'm talking about your integrity as, as a company, as a person. Um, the right thing to do if you take someone's money and don't deliver it, it and don't deliver the product is to give them their money back. And um, they basically, this is when I was talking to the founder and they basically went, look, I have to discuss this with the new CEO. Let me get back to you. I said, okay, well, I'm going to go, you know, check out the rest of the show floor, see if there's anything else cool to cover. And we'll, we'll go from there. And uh, you just, here's my cell. Just give me a call when you guys have had a chance to talk about it. And we'll, we'll go from there. So I get a call a few hours later and classic brand tactics. They go, okay, we've, we've talked yeah, about it. Yeah. We've come to a solution. I'm like, okay, cool. What is it? And they're like, well, why don't you swing by the booth? And I go, why don't we just talk about it on the phone? Because it should be a simple answer. If the news was good, yeah, they would just tell me. Yeah. But I was like, realistically, you know what? Um, Andy and Jake are about to order food. Get me what, one of whatever Jake's having. And I'm going to hobble over to the booth. And, um, I, and, I, and I, will, I will tell them no in their faces because whatever i'm not i'm not afraid of that if they think that bringing me there is going to somehow make me change my line in the sand that i've drawn then i've got something else coming um so sure i'll play your game so i get there and they tell me okay you know what if it was you know what if it was some kind of you know, share in the, what if, what if they got a, uh, what if in addition to the discount, they got some kind of share in the profits of the new product. And I'm sitting here going, what are you even talking about? Yeah. I know that I had discussed how Kickstarter is sort of dumb because it's basically, um, you know, investment where you don't get any equity. Right. Um, cause it's, it, it's, it, it's either buying a product or it's kind of that. Right. And you, can't, both of them are sort of well buying a product is fine unless the product doesn't get delivered in which case it's well basically just taking people's money right um and i kind of went yeah i mean hey thanks for playing but that's actually not how this works if you guys are a real company with integrity then what you do is you give them back their money i also run a physical goods business we also make mistakes from time to time and when we do we eat it and you can always offer like, oh, if you don't take a refund and you take a credit towards the next thing, we'll like bump up its value by a small yeah. amount. Or, or not even. If you're happy with the credit, take the credit. That too. But getting a refund needs to be an option. Yeah, it be should be possible. And, and I understand what they're saying. They made a car comparison. They were like, uh, you know, we originally sold a Citroen and now we're shipping a BMW. We can't just like ship everyone who paid for a Citroen a BMW. And I'm yeah, like, totally. Yeah, a hundred percent. So refund them. So refund them. <laughs> um, Cause you didn't ship the Citroen, you never shipped it. Yeah. Um, and so the really baffling thing about this to me is that if Calius is a real company and they really do have any integrity whatsoever. Um, this is such a small, price to pay the total backing was about a quarter million dollars which is a lot of money but which is a lot of money on like big manufacturing business scale but if you're looking to just put this in the past for real do it properly and if you want a pr win you basically say look yeah we'll offer you a refund but we actually think it's a better play if you take the credit and get this much better case, they'd probably convert a lot of people to the new case. But they're trying to they're trying to eat their cake and have it too. They're trying to just keep money from people who are not going to use the credit for the case, seem like they're looking like good guys, and launch this new case and kind of go, well, we tried. 
because no, none of those people are, unless they actually, you know, offer a refund, are going to be interested in their new promises. And you know what? It might be different this time. Streetcom assures me it'll be different. I, I trust them still because they're the manufacturing partner um, helping bring this thing to life. And I feel bad for Streetcom because it seems like they came into this having done nothing wrong, ultimately, just recognizing this is a super cool technology and wanting to bring it to gamers. I, so I feel bad for them, right? But no, at the end of the day, this is not a Kickstarter. There's a big difference for me between a Kickstarter from like a dude in a basement trying to build a hammer <clears throat> that turns into a crowbar and just ultimately not being able to figure it out and a company launching a product on Kickstarter or launching a, a new product category on Kickstarter in terms of the, the, the trust that I have and my expectation that this company will behave in a way that is, um, that protects their reputation, right? Because at the end of the day, it's all trust me, bro. Um, <clears throat> so with a, with a company that has some kind of established reputation, I look at it and I go, well, you probably want to maintain that so I can probably safely hand you my money. And in this case, that was not the case at all. And uh, that's kind of a funny pun because there was no case at all. They never shipped one. And I, I basically said, look, we're not, we're not going to do it. So that's, that's my... Uh... There is still, there's still no update on the hammer, by the way. I just checked. The last update says, we're back um, June 4th, 2022. We're almost at the one-year anniversary of that. We're going to get there. It's too bad. Because I really. Yeah. Yeah. Here's, a, here's a, a much better Twitch take from Tom Smith. If you see an ad for a $600 case and you go to the store and they say instead you have to buy a $1,000 case, that's called bait and switch. And that's even without collecting any money. Yeah. It's like, And yes, I know Kickstarter's terms do shield them from any kind of legal liability here. But. Yeah, but why would you trust that company? The law is not the be all and end all of how we should treat each other. Yeah. Like by law, you know, I'm allowed to try like you can you can you can be kind of a dick bag and still not break the law, you know? <laughs> that doesn't make it right. Yeah. Like uh I mean if you ever yeah, flow plane chat is like laws are not morality, legal does not equal ethical. Yes. Stuff like that. Yeah. Yes. Law is the bare minimum. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So we didn't cover it. And um I'm you know, it's too bad. But I, I just think at the end of the day, they had they had an opportunity to relatively cheaply actually put this behind them. I, I really wanted to cover the product, not just today, but going forward. I want I want one. You know? <laughs> Like I actually want one, and I and I wanted one, the though. views even, on it. Even if I was certain it would show up at this point, I would not personally buy one. I wanted the views. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. but would you buy one if they offered a refund to everyone who didn't get one? Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, see, that's what I'm talking about. Well, okay. I'm not like guaranteeing I would go no. and purchase one immediately, but, you but would I would consider definitely one. consider it because it is super cool. It's a very cool product. It's sweet. Yeah. So, like, yeah, it's and very possible. What's also possible is for us to tell you about our sponsors. Oh. Uh, Dan, hello, Dan, Daniel Besser. Hello. Are you uh, set up for this? Yeah. Mr. Mr. Besser, hello. Mm-hmm. Oh, hello, Daniel. Can you, no, can you actually Dan, not hear me? Can you hear me? No, we, we can hear you, but oh. we can... <laughs> Well, I wasn't going to tell him. No, I, I refuse. <laughs> we can hear you, You're but bastard uh, man. we can't see anything. So you kind of just got to tell us when to go. Uh, yeah, sorry. Bastard uh, Man we, is we my don't... favorite supervillain. <laughs> Uh, we don't actually have any Dennis integrations today, so um, it's just, oh, it's just okay. reads. All right. Well, let's read then. Backblaze is an affordable and easy to use cloud backup solution that starts at just $7 a month. How are they still at just $7 a month to start? It's pretty wild. Seriously, though, we use Backblaze. Yeah. Is We're that like in our talking points? At this point. Yeah, we actually use Backblaze a lot. Backblaze yeah. is sick. Yep. Uh, they make it simple, allowing you to backup almost anything from your Mac or PC and accessing it from anywhere in the world with their web and mobile apps. They don't even, oh yeah, okay. You can also easily protect your business data through a centrally managed admin and they'll let you restore your data for free via the web or even by mail. 
They will ship you a hard drive with your data right to your door. And when you're done, you can return the hard drive for a refund. And if you're worried about accidentally deleting files, you can increase your retention history to a year for, get this, an extra $2 a month. I'm sure we must pay more than that for extra retention. Or do we even have extra retention? Do you know? we, we, I, I, I don't know off the top of my head, but we pay a lot more than that because we, we use multiple services and we use them for multiple companies at this point. Floatplane backs up to them. Linus Media Group backs up to them. Right. Yeah. With over 55 billion files restored and two exabytes of data under their management, Backblaze has got you covered. Sign up and get a free 15-day trial, no credit card required, at oh. backblaze.com slash WAN. No credit card required trial. I can't, I can't endorse Backblaze strongly yeah, enough. Yeah, we, we like Backblaze. We have also liked Backblaze for a long time. We also like Squarespace. Yeah. And we actually use Squarespace too. Yep. If you're looking at creating and sharing your own content online, give Squarespace a try. Squarespace is an all-in-one platform for building a top-tier website and growing your brand online. You can upload or embed your video library and organize it in one of Squarespace's best-in-class templates to explore all the new ways that you can monetize your content. You can both display your social media content and push website content out to your channels. Plus, with member areas, you can unlock a whole new revenue stream for your videos by allowing you to post exclusive content behind either a subscription or a one-time fee. And Squarespace's analytics and insights ensure that you're optimizing your website every step of the way. So go to squarespace.com slash WAN to get 10% off today. Finally, the show is brought to you by Blackpoint Cyber. So Luke, say my talking points. As much as you had a blast during the whole hackening debacle, I think we can both agree that cyber attacks are bad. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Well, the former national security experts at Blackpoint Security, uh, Blackpoint Cyber, also agree, and that's what drove them to become a leading cybersecurity company specializing in advanced threat detection and response solutions for managed service providers. With their cutting-edge technology and expert-led team, they offer a streamlined security ecosystem that keeps MSPs and their customers safe from cyber threats. Their advanced threat detection and response capability is at the core of their services, enabling them to quickly identify and mitigate any security breaches on premises or in the cloud, while their continuous monitoring ensures that all systems are always protected. They have customizable solutions to fit every company's needs and a cost-effective product bundle to fit any budget. So why wait? You too can operate with an elite end-to-end -end cybersecurity strategy. To learn more, you can check out the link down below. All right. Now, we, Dan, what are we supposed to do now? We've got uh, three more merch messages. Is it weird just sitting in the studio by yourself? No, I'm hanging out with chatting AJ. with people on the internet. Uh, oh, AJ's, AJ's here. There? So I am. Uh, I don't look like a crazy person laughing to myself in an empty warehouse. Is AJ just sitting on the set? Yeah, yeah. We're uh, we're eating some sushi together. It's really nice. Are you both sitting on the set? Are you in my spot? Absolutely not. No, sir. I yeah, have a I have a backup even... technical difficulties line of sitting in your spot. I think he has a better I think he probably has a better spot than me anyway. Yeah, probably. His yeah. desk like actually fits legs under it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my, my my spot is really uncomfortable. I was I was mostly making a big bang theory reference. People are allowed to sit in my chair. I feel like I have to explain that. Because oh, the number of people that take what I say seriously, and then I, I, me yeah, I pick wall. up, uh, I pick it up too. Um, I'm also not serious. Yeah, I sit in his chair all the time. Maybe. <laughs> Wait, you do? Don't look at me like that, Dan. We've talked about the this. whole company. Just to make sure there's like a certain level of quality, the whole company after Monday morning meeting actually at one by one make sure that everyone sits in Linus's chair for at least 15 seconds. And Jake you're usually not, farts. You're not yeah. in on Monday. Right. Yeah. Yeah. What are we doing? Where am I? Oh yeah, merch messages. All right, so we got three to go. Yeah, through. hit me. Your thoughts. Uh, you once had a video on object recognition in surveillance systems using AI neural network ASICs. Do you see dedicated AI chips being all over devices in the next decade? Absolutely. 100%. I mean, we're already seeing it. Intel... Oh, in fact, I think one of the topics in the doc is in or no rather a topic we decided not to talk about but is pretty cool anyway i guess uh is that intel showed off stable diffusion running on their um their new ai accelerated meteor lake chip and that's it's like what luke said about how like private uh you know private yeah. um machine learning models are going to be 
really important going forward. So being able to just like generate an image. I mean, you might not even, would you, would you still need a, an internet connection? Maybe, maybe not. Wait for what? To just, to just generate uh, an nope. image. As long, yeah, I mean, as long as you have enough storage for the model. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So, huh. I mean, they'll probably make you go through the cloud anyway. Well, and you could, you could retrain. So, like, you could... Looking you could, at you, Google freaking voice assistant. Anyway, sorry. No, but, I'm, like, Stable Diffusion itself, you can download, run it offline entirely. Oh, I've never tried. I yeah, didn't know that. I've okay. really done it. Yeah, yeah, cool. So, yeah, being able to do that faster... I mean, yeah, we're going to see that in your laptop. I mean, we've been seeing we've been seeing um, like machine learning cores built into phones for quite some time, doing everything from you know trying to optimize your battery life to uh, optimizing your your photography, right? Like, yes, AI chips in all the things, whether you like it or not. Oh yeah, it's absolutely one big thing. A little bit different here. How did the short circuit channel get its name? I want to say. James is the one who came up with it because I think I talked about this once in the past and I thought it was it me or something and then I think he corrected me okay. but I could have this memory completely wrong and Gmail search is useless now oh yeah there's no way you're gonna find it so if I were to try to find just the first reference to short circuit in my inbox um, that might just be impossible Oh, good. John used to have short circuit in his stupid email signature. So I have every email I ever got from Jono here. Perfect. Um, you, you, I don't think you're going to find it. I mean, isn't it kind of worth a shot to see the, the conversation that we had around it? Here we go. Top names for new channel. Oh. Wait. Whoa! So the name it came was for a Riley. Different thing. So this is when we were okay. Okay, this is fun. Uh, top names for new channel is the subject line from Mr. Nick Light, February twenty eighteen. Careful, because apparently we might end up using these in the future. Ah, uh, we're not going to use any of these. these okay. Um, tech linked or clinked, pronounced clinked. So it's like an abbreviated ch, like tech linked. Uh, we didn't end up with clinked because that was dumb um tech brief brief tech brink of tech tech point uh it's kind of like a tip um best and latest in tech blt we, we have always liked uh, the acronyms quickie news quickie news ah that quickie news held on for a little while yeah remember that um the cash and then i i reply i actually like tech linked best out of them adding riley for his thoughts uh the three that i kind of liked were tech linked tech point and quickie news and then let's see, Riley pitched in with, I gotta say, I find myself gravitating toward TechLinked as well. We were trying not to do TechLinked because it's just- It's so close to NetLink. Well, but that was why. Yeah, no. Like that, we're just like, <laughs> what if instead of NetLinked, it was just TechLinked? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, like we, even though it was my suggestion, I was also kind of trying not to do it. This one's pretty uh, good. I wouldn't say that. So Riley pitches in. He goes, yeah, I find myself gravitating towards it as well. But I feel like there's so many shows and sites that have tech in the name, so I'd be less inclined to want that. I've got a couple more to throw in the pot. And one of them is a really good idea that we might use someday, so we're not going to say that one. But he goes, what about short circuit? That is the first reference to short circuit. So I think it must have been Riley. We had some discussion. Um, Short Circuit lost because of the movie dot, dot, dot problem. Uh, yep. Kind of sounds like Inside Track, which, you know, is good. But the movie problems, there's a movie called Short Circuit. Uh. So we made our name ultimately when we launched Short Circuit totally different by making it one, one word. One word. Got him searchability let's go yeah yeah that's that's wild i i i did not know that it was riley but it as, appears that it was totally riley whether we realize it or not is it is it possible oh okay hold on short circuit branding discussion what is this uh this is a doc 
uh, meeting notes. This, this is amazing. I, I, I love just like poking around at this old stuff. Our objective for this meeting, attendance, Nick, John, O, James, and Linus. Objective, establish a baseline for the new channel's logo and branding direction. Meeting notes, should the name be one word or two? Um, Linus wants it wants it one word name and he likes it. it this, I, this is someone else's notes. <laughs> Nick, it should be in all caps if it's one word. Linus wants one word, big S, big C. Guess I won that. Executive flex, short circuit, big S, big C. <laughs> Uh, the reason I care about that, I, was, I, I wasn't just trying to be a jerk about it and just be like, no, this way, um, because I like being able to abbreviate things. SC is easier when you like clearly see the SC. Next up, color than graphics. Colors, pink and yellow, says Linus. Baby blue and pink, says Nick. Linus wants eye searing. Nick says yellow is very aggressive, and if you're looking at it on a screen, it can be offensive. Linus wants to see options. Yellow and pink, baby blue and pink. What did we ultimately baby end up blue with? blue and pink, I think so. Or baby blue, pink, orange, purple. and purple, and white. So that's And something. yellow. And yellow. They're all in there. <laughs> Every color. <laughs> no green, no red, no navy. Um, and I, yeah, I think, I think none of those ended up making it. 80s styling, digital branding. Both of those kind of stayed. Yeah. Wow, this is so cool. How, how did how did things come to be? There you go. Uh, these are the kinds of meetings that we have that I never want to have again. <laughs> like, I, uh, I shouldn't even say that because I do I do enjoy the creative I was process. Say, you like some of that stuff, and that actually does fall under vision officer, sir. So good luck with that. I just I can't do all of it. That's the thing. I can't yeah. be in every one of these meetings anymore. Yeah, like it's exhausting. I'd rather be on the camera on short circuit. Mm -hmm. all right dan hit me sure thing. but that's where you have like channel managers like sorry one sec dan that's where you sorry. have like channel managers because like riley is working on game linked right yep so like it, he's the channel manager for linked in general as far as my understanding goes so like i'm sure he has more play into the that type of like were you involved in the picking of the primary colors for game linked no yeah so we've moved on. I actually first saw the logo live on WAN show when I was like, oh, there's a channel for it. Yeah. Uh, by the way, uh, it's driving Riley crazy how much I keep talking about Game Linked on WAN show because dang it, Linus, it's not ready for launch yet. Um, so if you want to if you want to bother him, go, go subscribe, subscribe to Game Linked. Yeah, because the more subscribers are on it, the more he's like, oh, Linus. <laughs> You keep talking about game linked. I wanted to do a big, a big surprise launch. The surprise is over, so you might as well get subscribed <laughs> so that at least he can launch the first video and it can get a ton of views because yeah. you guys will all get a notification yeah. and you can watch it and it's going to be awesome because it's going to be tech linked but games and you guys are going to love it. Oh right, the pool. Okay, Dan, don't let me forget to talk about that after this one more merch message. Okay. Hey, LLD, I love to see Luke back on camera and the two of you work, uh, you two of you really work well together. Uh, what were some challenges with Luke returning and will we see more of him? Perhaps a short circuit? It was really hard to walk from the WAN set over. <laughs> that was very tough. Especially because uh, you were waiting for WAN to start anyway when we did that PC cleaning products video. Yep. Uh, I mean, if we're going to be late for when, we might as well both be late for when. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know. What, what were the challenges with, with you returning? I, I genuinely don't know. I think the biggest challenge with bringing Luke back on camera is that compared to when he used to be on camera, he has a lot of work to do now. Oh, yeah. Like, I don't have the time to do it consistently. There's no way. Yeah. I'm excited about game linked because the prospect of being able to just like and and tech linked and stuff like that where I can just show up on set, do it really quickly, and then leave and go back to what I'm doing is like a lot more feasible than even to go through the whole process for like an LTD video or something. And that kind of worked in in this scenario that we're talking about with the with the cleaning products video. Because like you said, I was just waiting for WAN anyways. So my my work was pretty ineffective. So it was like oh, I can wait over there and like clean some stuff. So it just worked. I don't know. But yeah, I got a lot of stuff to do. I don't I can't do videos all the time. I enjoy it, it's fun, but yeah. All right. Pool. So the pool company we contracted 
is GRN Pool and Landscape. And it has been two years. We checked. It has actually been two years since we got the original like documentation and sent a deposit to begin work on our project. Um, at the time, they had pretty good reviews and uh, seemed very knowledgeable and professional. Uh, things were moving along quite quickly when it came to you know selecting materials and and design and and all of that kind of stuff. And we actually ended up starting with pool and awarding them landscaping stuff as well, which now we're not doing with them anymore. Did um, they do any of that? Yeah, yeah. So all the stuff that changed in like the outside so far has been them. So they they do work and. This is one of those cases where I, I want to I wanna give mad props to the on-site workers. Like all the guys that I've had the pleasure of interacting with have been just solid. Um, and they, they seem to care, they seem to try, but I think they really, you know, this is my own speculation. I think they really struggle with communication. And so when they do make mistakes, uh, a lot of the time it's because they just, didn't know. So this company has screwed up or just not shown up so many things. Um, and some of it's just like, you know, oh, that could have easily been a misunderstanding. Um, like for example, the, all the tiles, um, that this could have been a communication issue. I don't know, but they were all supposed to go one way. And instead, it goes oh, one way yeah. down the sides, and it goes this way down the so yeah. it like looks stupid. It's a little weird. Uh, they used a different <laughs> color of grout for like the sandy grout around the pool and the ones on the deck, and it's like these are obviously like first world problems. Um, but they, oh my god, uh, oh oh yeah, this was uh, this was this was a this was a really good one. Um, our interior contractor, who's a totally different contractor. We're really happy with those guys. Might as well shout them out too. Shermar, um, like showed up and was like, Hey, I couldn't help noticing they were digging really close to the house and they've done nothing to support these, these footings for the upper balcony. Um, yeah, that can't be like that. Um, and they, you know, had to help us get that fixed. Oh, um, nice. basically like put these braces on it. Um, the, the the really the really bad part the worst part has been the communication though just yeah we're coming this day and then they just don't show up and then we go hey where the heck were you and like uh, we're coming this other day yeah but that didn't answer my question where where were you and looking at Google reviews it looks like this has this has become if it wasn't always uh, a problem and the way that they are conducting their business seems to me to be extremely um, extremely skeezy, uh, where they, you know, they, they say they're going to do things. They don't do things. They say they're, they're taking deposits to acquire materials. Those materials take an extremely long time to show up. Um, you just, and it's, oh man, it's just endless. You know, we, you know how uh, we're neighbors with Coverstar? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So when we were talking about pool covers, we were like, oh, Hey, we're neighbors with Coverstar. Why don't we go swing by and ask them if they want to do a neighborly discount or if there's anything that we can we can do with them because we're like literally almost next door neighbors. You never know, right? Like it never hurts to ask. If yeah. you ask for the friends and neighbors discount <clears throat> at uh, one of the local uh, paint chains, they will literally just apply a discount to your order. Um, like it never hurts to ask. And they're like, oh yeah, well, we used to use CoverStar a lot, but these other ones are better. And then all these like 18 months later or whatever, they're like, hey, yeah, we're getting the sizing done. CoverStar is coming out to measure it. And I'm like, which is fine. I had no problem using CoverStar. But you could have just told me that. And then I could have asked them if we can get a friends and neighbors discount. Yeah. Um, and like, you know, in, in a very early version of the statement of work, it's very clear that we wanted in-wall stairs. Because uh, I really like in-wall stairs. I don't like the ladder hanging in. Yeah. It's like harder to clean, pain in the butt. Um, and like it wears just, out like, and feel stuff. way more stable. Yeah. I just, I just wanted in wall yeah. stairs. Yeah, nice. And so, you know, they sent us a bill for, first of all, we noticed they weren't there 
And then we're like, hey, they're not there. And they sent us a bill for what it would cost to add in mall stairs. And we send them the thing that's like, hey, this says in mall stairs. And it's been a year and a half. So there was some verbal communication in addition to it just being written on the thing. And so it's not actually legally binding that they were definitely doing it. But then there's one other Google review where the person also says they asked for in-wall stairs and then were billed for it later. Um, so maybe this is just a play. I don't know. Um, but long story short, the challenges are, and you're probably asking, like, you'd think you guys would have learned, you know, why do you keep working with them? And there's not a lot of pool contractors in the Vancouver area, and particularly for concrete pools, there are even fewer. So you're, you're sort of at the mercy. They, they take deposits, which, um, you know, yeah, you're right. Maybe we should have stopped giving them deposits, but we always kept being told, yeah, no, we're gonna, we're gonna, you know, we're gonna get it you know, we're going to get it done soon. We're so close. We're so close. We are actually extremely close right now. All they have to do, the slab's already outside. All they have to do is put the pool equipment on the slab and cut in the stupid in-wall stairs that I asked for um, and do the uh, install the cover and then put on the uh, whatever the the material they put over the concrete on the on the inside of the pool is yeah. I forget what it's called it's like some plaster or something something like that uh, and it's like a couple weeks of work and we've been sitting here with a couple weeks of work left in the project since like March or something like that uh, and it's it's like constantly like this with these guys they finally acknowledge now so this is I guess an improvement since we gave them an ultimatum we were like hey you guys need to show up and start working continuously starting on this day or we're going public with this like it's not the kind of thing we like to do but I, this is ridiculous and you you basically um yeah yeah you, you you earned it um so they finally admitted to us that yes they're pulling people off our job and putting them on other jobs and we're sitting here going no um our project has been pending for two years yeah, and this is the second summer it's gonna miss and the delays have been from you guys not from us these were not our fault we've always We've always paid promptly, as promptly as we can, given that Yvonne finds all kinds of billing irregularities, because she's Yvonne. Um, and so it takes a ton of time. It has, it has taken an inordinate amount of time for her because there'd be no communication from HQ. So she would have to go out every morning and tell that she basically had to project manage it when they were doing the landscaping because nobody told anybody anything. So they ended up doing all kinds of dumb stuff, like digging up a trench in the wrongs or like, they, they dug up this uh, drain thing that they ultimately had then covered and then had to like dig again, retrench it and then put a new one in because they just like didn't have a drain anymore. Um, allegedly. Yeah. So I'm, I'm extremely frustrated and that's why we haven't been able to do whole room water cooling for the server room because um, even though Shermar's plumbing guys did a great job of putting in all the all the piping and everything that we needed before the concrete did finally, or the shotcrete did ultimately get put in. Um, there's nothing, to, there's no pool to act as a thermal mess. So, you know, again, I wanna be very clear. This is a first world problem. I get it. But also when you pay for something, you should probably, and you shake hands and you have an agreement, then you should probably <clears throat> get that thing. Is it is there like special liabilities with making pools or something? Like, is is there some reason why you couldn't get a general contractor? Yeah, it's just it's a really specialized type yeah. of work, and uh, we did find another pool contractor that's willing to take over the job, which is part of why I'm able to talk about this because like at I was like at their mercy. Basically, they had my money, and unless I want to take them to court, which I don't think I'm the only person doing at this point, um, either I play ball and get a pool or I antagonize them and they just pull everybody off my job and work on something else because they clearly have other work to do, right? So I'm just sort of sitting here stuck. Yeah. Um, sorry, what was your question again though? Uh, no, I just, I don't know. Oh yeah, switching contractors. The, yeah. yeah, we found another one that's willing to finish the job. So that's great. But <laughs> the referral we got for these guys was from like another mom at the school and she was like, yeah, it took six months and it was pulling teeth, but they did get it done. So it's not a perfect reference. And they won't even look at it, let alone quote it, until we have formally dismissed GRN from the job. 
Oh, wow. Which is, you know, going back to luring you into the Computex yeah. booth to get you to cover something different. Yeah. A classic contractor move. Yeah, that's brutal. Um, Cause yeah, if their quote sucks, then, you know, obviously I don't want to go would with you, them. Would you consider if they charged you to come out and quote it? Um, that'd be better. They, they just like won't. charge you like an hourly rate. They're just like, no, 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 no. But I'm saying like, sure. Would yeah, that make I guess sense? So. Yeah. Cause That's I could, fine. I could understand like them being like, yeah, I don't want to just help you like negotiate a better rate for yeah, somebody else. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Rough. Well, yeah. at least I now know that there won't be swimming at Linus's place this summer. Yeah. I've given up. We were supposed to be swimming before the end of last summer. Yeah. And I don't think we're going to swim in 2023. Yeah. If you're switching contractors and stuff, like, no way. Yeah. I really don't see it happening. There isn't that much to do. There's like two weeks of work left to do, Luke. Theoretically, I should be swimming in mid-June. I wouldn't be surprised, though, because if, if this new contractor comes in, they might have liability concerns about the previously existing work. And they're going to have to go and check a whole bunch of stuff, which I'm sure I'm going to pay for. Mm -hmm. Yep. I'm really frustrated. Yeah, I think it's going to be rough. Okay. Are there other topics? LTX 2023 update. We are under two months away from LTX 2023. We have sold over 3,500 tickets so far. Ooh. There are an insane amount of creators. Actually, just naming them all would take a significant period of time. So I would suggest going to ltxexpo.com slash creators and checking it out yourself. Also, volunteer applications are live. Um, Okay, there it is. It's not a link for some reason, but you can sign up to volunteer by visiting ltxexpo.com slash volunteer. Applicants will receive confirmation starting Monday. Uh, some things that you can do at LTX. There's a PC building workshop sponsored by ASUS where you can learn to build a PC from start to finish. Great for those wanting to know where to start or potentially a fun way to like show a partner or a friend how to do it. Um, there are 20 different stations with workshops happening all throughout the event. Uh, there's a Space Cadet Pinball sponsored by Height. Uh, eight different stations of Space Cadet Pinball on custom LTX rigs. And there's a high score leaderboard with prizes for the highest scores. Uh, there's Racing Sims sponsored by Black Point Cyber. Seven awesome racing sims with D-Box haptic systems. Integrated leaderboard with best laps of the day as well. Uh, there are VR RC cars. Again, take control with our modified cars equipped with an FPV system and steering wheel slash pedal controls. Is this the same setup as last time? But way better. Nice. Yeah, yeah. it's... it's <laughs> No. Okay. It's all new. Okay. Sweet. Way better. Uh, there's a custom race course on the expo floor. When he says that, last time it was sick. So that, It was sick, but it was exciting. unreliable. We couldn't keep the cars in operation. Oh, that makes so sense. So it's it's designed to be a lot more reliable this time. Cool. And there's a 1v1 pyramid. What? Win your way to the top of the variety of classic and modern games. Oh, cool. So there's like a little 1v1 tournament. All right. Best slash worst of SC, short circuit. Love it or hate it, our short circuit hosts have picked the best and worst products seen on the channel to look at and experience. Uh, DIY Ethernet cable. Learn how to crimp and make your own Cat 6A Ethernet cable. Take it a step further and see if you have what it takes to build a cable as fast as possible. Uh, Whale Land, sponsored by Ubiquity. Two full days of land games and tournaments. And water cooling workshops with epic games. Oh, cool. Learn the ins and outs of water cooling from AIOs to custom hardline loops. There's also PC Building Simulator 2 will be featured at the booth, booth if you uh, want to create a virtual loop instead get your tickets today at tickets.ltxexpo.com i am pretty hyped i'm really excited that was a very uh consistent topic of conversation throughout computex talking to other creators so like yeah i'll see you at ltx man man there's so many creators tech tech potatoes coming so that's dr ian cutris uh toasty bros ufd tech stacy roy uh Terrence apparently coming Taryn Van Hemer is on the list. That's funny. Uh, I, I didn't negotiate all of these necessarily. So I, some of these I'm finding out for the first time. Snazzy Labs is coming, though. Sort of the Homes coming. Sarah Dietschy, Christopher Yee, uh, Pedro from PCMR is coming. Uh, Paul's Hardware, Epos Vox. Electro Boom is going to drop yeah, by. Yeah. Uh, David Amell from um, uh, Marquez's team. Craft Computing, Coalition Gaming, Chris Titus Tech. That This is just... Uh, 
Brandon Wiley is coming too. Oh, that's awesome. That makes sense. Um, Ant Venom's coming. Man, there are so... Der Bauer's coming. Hardware Connects. Uh, Eber from Hardware Connects is coming. Uh, Greg There's Salazar. Like Jay's Two Cents. Actually too many to name them all. So yeah. I, again, I would suggest checking out the previous page yourself. Yeah. Because it's actually going to be nuts. Yeah. Strange Parts. Ah! This is this is awesome. Hey! Uh, oh, crap. I'm an idiot. Uh, I forget. I always forget if his name is Corey or Kerry, but the Fox, uh, who really specializes in handhelds and has been just killing it lately, killing it. Like, look at this view to subscriber ratio: wow. seventy-six thousand subscribers, but regularly doing twenty to eighty thousand views a video. Getting more views than your subscriber count is pretty sick. That always means you 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 did a you did a banger. Yeah, you did a banger. Theo Joe. Theo Joe making an appearance. Love it. Okay. What are we supposed to do now, Dan? I'm lost without our cue cards. I feel I, like I, I, yeah, yeah, I, I forgot to mail them to you. Uh, well, let's see. We technically have another 10 minutes until WAN After Dark. Uh, but we do have a merch hell of a lot of merch messages. Uh, so <laughs> WAN in the morning. Really, I'm surprised there's that many merch messages. We uh... there's a lot of really good questions today. Oh, well, there's not. Yeah, there is actually quite a few. <laughs> Way to go, Luke. Um, Gaslighting okay, me well, to my yeah. face. Wow. I yeah. mean, it's it's been a lot worse. You're basically an abuser. Oh my goodness. Oh my gosh, Luke, the doc wasn't done. When we were looking at this, there's like huge stuff in here that we haven't talked about yet. Um, thanks, Riley. Adding all this stuff that we absolutely have to talk about. Okay, where are we at? Where are we at? Where are we at? Diablo 4 developers uh, do a Q&A with fake oh, yeah. slash softball fan questions. This is extremely not surprising. This is amazing. Yeah. Okay. Games Radar's Future Games Show interviewed the art director and associate game director of Diablo 4 asking fan questions like, the cutscenes in D4 are gorgeous. How important was it to get these as high quality as they are in the game? Uh, Twitter user Phil Tacular looked up the social handles of the fans who submitted the questions and they were a mixture of inactive accounts made years ago or extremely recently uh when uh, okay to be fair that might be fine yeah it might be people that just have throwaway twitter accounts yeah because but I, also it wouldn't have been all of them uh, for sure yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, when asked for comment blizzard said they were not involved in the process of gathering questions after much discourse the future game show posted an update via a comment on the original interview saying we messed up in quotes Basically, they claim many of the questions were legit, but the social handles were randomly generated to protect the original what? Originally used randomly identities. generated, but they landed on actual handles. Cool. What? I'm sure that's against at least someone's terms of service. That's weird. Um, okay. Uh, moving on, Do we, we got to talk about this one because it was actually called out at the beginning. Dolphin Steam launch postponed. The Dolphin emulator team has announced that its planned Steam release has been indefinitely postponed following a letter written from Nintendo to Valve citing the Digital Millennium Copyright Act or DMCA, uh, which is kind of rough. Making matters worse, Valve confirmed that they reached out to Nintendo first presumably because they knew that as a platform hosting Dolphin, Valve would be, that makes matters worse. That's just not surprising at all. Uh, Valve would be in the crosshairs of Nintendo's lawyers, obviously. Yeah, that makes yeah. sense that they would have done that. Um, as Dolphin had not been released on Steam, the letter is more of a shot across the bow, warning Valve that the emulator's release would violate the DMCA. Would it though? <sighs> okay, well here, sure. This is This is, I guess, the argument. Uh, Dolphin's code contains the Wii common key. Yeah, that sounds like a... Nintendo's proprietary code for decrypting Wii games, which is a 39-digit number that is well-known, so I won't paste it here, says our writer. <sighs> but having that in the thing, like, that does actually make sense as to something that you could go after, even it is if it is commonly known or whatever. 
Some other emulators require the game files to host such keys instead, which is arguably legally safer. Um, not that we know anything allegedly, this is not legal advice, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Several law lawyers have confirmed to Ars Technica that Nintendo could have a strong case should it come to a lawsuit because the inclusion of that key. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. A spokesperson for Nintendo said using illegal emulators or illegal copies of games harms development and ultimately stifles innovation. Discussion question. Nintendo being an asshole is one thing, but is there anything else Valve could have done other than poke the bear? I don't think so, to be completely No, honest. I mean, they were going to be... Uh, Valve is no stranger to lawsuits, you yeah. know, at their scale. It just happened. I mean, we uh, we talked about this recently. What was it? The uh, the, con the haptic or the rumble on the Steam Deck or something like that has some patent troll coming after them right now. Yeah. Um. I, I, as much as I have pointed at Valve in the past and been not happy, uh, this was very reasonable of them to do. Yeah. As for whether using emulators, which, by the way, are not illegal in Nintendo, yeah. um, as for whether that ultimately stifles innovation, I, I would say that playing Tears of the Kingdom at 4K 60 FPS with improved visual fidelity is innovation and your crappy hardware stifles innovation. Um, this can go boom. both ways. Boom. boom, got him. Yeah, got him. Um, speaking of stifling innovation, did you see the Reddit API pricing conversation? Yeah, by the some... way, can I help you with this? What the hell, man? Did you not even do this, bro? Oh, I actually like the separation. Oh, it helps my brain. All right. Well, I'm sorry I broke your brain then. No, it's fine. Okay. <laughs> Not the first time. <laughs> yeah. Um, Christian Selig, the developer of the popular Apollo iOS app for Reddit, says that Reddit wants $12,000 per 50 million requests. And this is a quote here. Apollo made 7 billion requests last month, which would put it at about $1.7 million a month. The average Apollo user uses 344 requests per day, wow. which would cost $2.50 a month. That means even with only subscription users, the app would be unable to break even. Imgur apparently charges Apollo $166 for the same number of requests. That is literally almost an order of, no, oh wow, almost two orders of magnitude less. Twitter, of course, kicked off the trend of expensive API access to social platforms with its lowest tier offering only 10,000 requests for $100. That's brutal. Uh, Twitter has subsequently been abandoned as a data source by many academics, and the future of many long-term projects is unclear, such as Botto, which assesses how likely an account is to be a bot, and whose work was actually cited in Elon Musk's fight to not buy Twitter. Um, yeah, this sucks. People are asking who would pay that for Reddit's API, though. I think that's the I point. I think that's the point. The point is that these platforms are getting scraped by AI companies and not getting any of the money that is getting dumped into AI right now. And they're sitting there going, well, if we kill a bunch of research projects, and we kill a bunch of uh, community favorite third-party apps in the process, I guess that's totally worth it because we'll definitely still be popular platforms that will definitely still be valuable for these AI companies to scrape, and we're not going to throw the baby out with the bathwater. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't know, know what's going to happen in that regard, uh, but it's not surprising at all to me. It sucks. Yeah. Um, there's a there's a fair bit more information that I've been reading about this that's not in our notes here necessarily, but um, Christian, the Apollo developer, sort of broke down um, from from Reddit's public financial statements how much each of those calls has to cost them, and basically they're they're so far beyond just you know well. You know, the Reddit app has ads that help support us and we're not getting that from your third party app and we need to find a way to make this, you know, sustainable. Like, they, like they're so far beyond just we need to be sustainable. This is just yeah. 
a blatant cash grab, yeah, according like, to his math. Someone in the full plane chat said the Google Maps API is less than $900 for 500,000 calls for comparison. Yeah, I, I I said this with the Twitter one too. The goal here is not to make it affordable or for to make it make sense. The goal here is to crush third-party apps. Yeah. Like, yeah. And given how unpopular the first-party Reddit app is, um, I got to wonder what this means for Reddit. Like, will no one's safe. Where's Slashdot today? Where's Dig? <clears throat> I do agree with that, but I, I feel like we've been in a actually surprisingly long period of internet stagnation now. Yeah, but it's like that article I sent you before, the enshittification of yes. everything. Yeah. And I think the reason that everything is coming to a head Good. right now is because we also went through a period of basically unrestricted money hose flowing into technology, into into web however many point o companies, right. right? Yeah. And so now that that now that that spigot is getting turned off and it's all going into AI or it's going into uh, you know finding new ways to make housing unaffordable for regular people. Ah, good. Um, I think we're seeing these companies pivot to hey we we just need to like make money to please our shareholders, right? We we can't just be in this in this growth phase. We can't be in a pleasing the the user phase anymore. And even if if because I, I know some people are going to sniff at that and be like, oh yeah, but no companies are going to pay this API fee. That might be true. I don't think they're necessarily expecting to make money off of this. <clears throat> but I do think a significant effort is being put to hamper how much other people are able to make money off of your stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Just just putting up walls. Like no, if if someone is using Twitter, we want them using Twitter through our own means. <clears throat> if someone is using Reddit, we want them using Reddit through our own means, etc. Yeah. Yeah. Someone in full plane chat, Run John, said, My Reddit account is 15 years old. I'll be leaving once they kill third party apps. Uh, to be completely honest, that'll probably be good for you, anyways. Hey, uh, iOS says the first party Reddit app makes thousands of tracking calls to the web that my pie hole went nuts blocking and blew the log files out to gigabytes. Um, so yeah, there yeah, are just, reasons. Just... There are reasons they want you using the first party, the first party tools, and they're not always user friendly reasons. Oh yeah, they they rarely are. Then just stop using. Like, is is your life actually enriched by using Reddit? Maybe, but probably not as much. It can as be. Reddit's do. a really good resource for like, how Most... do I fix this problem? Reddit. I, I don't know if I'm just being cynical here. Maybe I am, or pessimistic, or whatever. But I think most people doom scroll instead of gather information in that way. I have found that a more effective Google search for a while has been the same Google search that you would normally do, and then you append Reddit on the end. Yeah. That's kind of unfortunate. It just shows Google going down the hole, to be honest. But um, if you use it in that way, that's kind of its own thing. And if you use it in that way, you don't really need the app either, if we're being honest. Um, oh, I don't use the app. Yeah. So I, I just, whatever. I, I actually have just like a muscle memory uh, thing. Like there's no way to get rid of the notification as far as I can tell on mobile when I'm just on the web. Cause I, I can't find for what I do on Reddit, I can't find any reason to use an app instead of just using my browser. I, I, I can't think of one. All I want to do is read things from time to time and post even more occasionally. Um, and so it, it prompts me like every time I load the site, Reddit's better in the app. You want to use the app? No, no, no yeah, not really. No. I, I don't even, I don't, it bothered me for a long time and it definitely hasn't gone away, but it doesn't bother me anymore because I just, no, yeah. no, yeah. no, I think I'm good actually. Yeah. Someone in Flowplane chat, uh, my husband absolutely doom scrolls. He doesn't learn anything useful 99% of the time. Yeah. I think that is the standard approach to using Reddit to be completely honest. Like I think most people that use Reddit could benefit very significantly from using it way less. Um, but that isn't saying that Reddit is useless. I find it very, very useful for like information. Um, yeah. A lot of times when I do that Google search and I append Reddit, Reddit is like actually the best source. And I do it because I have done it without Reddit at the end and found nothing useful and then done it with Reddit at the end and then finding very good answers from.
Guys, I don't know if you can hear me. I can't hear you at the moment. Hello? Oh, man. Sorry, chat. Hold on a second. Tap, tap, tap. I don't want to ad lib everything. Not Mike Angie. Well, I guess it's just it's just me now. Am I I'm I'm not sure I'm sending to them either. This is very strange. Mute, unmute. Hmm. I'm going to go ahead and restart this browser tab. I hope you enjoy seeing the thing that I put up. Join. Hello. Oh. Are you there? Hello. Hi, Dan. Hello. Oh, okay. he disconnected. Oh. I did notice there was only one person in call, but I thought so it maybe didn't show yourself. I was, was showing famous. that I was still connected. I could still see your camera feed because your camera feed is fed directly from your call, but I think we lost audio. Okay, cool. cool. Right, We're back. Are you back. Not my fault. Goodbye. <laughs> well, it's not my fault. I think it might be. Must be Luke's fault. Uh, maybe. We can, we By can proxy, it's Luke's that. fault. Yeah, I'm down. Oh, that's true. I mean, poo rolls down a hill, so. Yep. Up a hill. Poo rolls up a hill. But management is to blame when someone does something wrong. So does that mean poo rolls up a hill? Because you're above me, so. I'm not anymore. Or wait, it's not July 1st yet. Yeah, get on. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's my fault. Yeah, it's Linus's fault. <laughs> he got him. I uh, want to give you guys a little update on the eating disorder helpline chat bot that we talked about previously. Uh, they have paused their plan to switch from human staff and volunteers to a chat bot. That's probably good. After users found that it was easy to prompt the bot into recommending calorie restriction, food avoidance, and frequent weigh-ins, even after wow. the user said the doctor advised them against dieting due to their eating disorder. Um, I mean, the weight loss advice was broadly accurate, but the bot lacked the ability of a human to guide the conversation and simply reflected users' preoccupations back at them, potentially reinforcing anorexia and bulimia. Um, when posts about this issue drew attention online, Nida's communications and marketing vice president commented on at least one post calling it a flat out lie. But then the next day, the chatbot was taken down. Uh, they described the issue as a bug, thanking the community members who brought this to their attention. <laughs> That's a bit of a pivot. <laughs> so, That's a flat out lie. Thank you for bringing it to our attention. I know that this wasn't an AI chatbot. Yeah. So it's not really on topic in terms of the AI revolution that we're undergoing right now, or, or like bubble, or whatever. technology. Yeah. Um, however, it does raise some interesting questions about what it's going to look like when someone inevitably does do this with an AI chatbot. Um, and so I'm glad we talked about it. I'm glad we have an update for you guys. And I'm glad that we can move on to talk about the MetaQuest 3 coming this fall, $4.99. Have you seen pictures? Just in this doc, actually. It is 40% slimmer with full color pass through, higher resolution, better controllers. And the Quest 2 is getting a price drop to $299 for 128 gigs on June 4th. That's right, a price drop from so wait is it tell me something okay hold on let's just let's just play a little game drop okay what about this oh oh fake drop. what about this is that is that 
toss. <laughs> is that a drop? A price toss. A price toss. So we start toss? calling like uh, Amazon sales price tosses. Yeah. Which is extremely <laughs> loud. Oh, oh. sorry. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, Dan. Uh, Headphone users. Sorry, everyone. That's okay. But good, but good it's demo. funny, right? Was it? Was it at least funny? It was, it was pretty good. Okay, pretty cool. Good. So it's back down to the regular price and just in time for Apple's headset on Monday. Let's go. That I am much more interested in just saying. I've had some interesting debates with people about this. I, I had my first dinner with a billionaire. I'm not going to name them, but a uh, very, very interesting person. I wonder. Uh, super smart. Um, what? You wonder? Yeah. There's only like a set amount of... Was it at Computex? Don't worry about it. Okay um anyway the point is super nice super smart shockingly engaged in like the business for someone who realistically doesn't have to anymore um and uh, we had a really cool conversation about apple where they basically were like yeah apple's really great and i was like yeah apple's really great until you like get into their sort of hypocrisy and the way they treat their users like Oh, you want to update the firmware on that product you bought? Oh, you haven't bought enough of our products? Ooh, oh, that's too bad. Um, and, you know... Go borrow someone else's. Yeah, some of their business that they are quite invested in. You know, I'm going to keep things very vague so that it's really difficult to pin this down. Uh, but some of their business that they're invested in uh, has a, takes a very principled approach to to product development and and to billing for their customers and you know I really respect that and so um, you know I I uh, I felt like I wasn't just talking to someone who's like well of course Apple should do that they should just make more money like it was uh, it was a really great conversation and we steered back towards Apple later on in the conversation because they sort of asked me to to speculate on Apple's VR headset and I kind of went look. Um, I know that this sort of flies in the face of everything I just said about Apple because I said a bunch of negative stuff, but that doesn't mean that I don't acknowledge the positive that, that they do. And that doesn't mean that I don't respect a lot of what they do and their and their technological innovation and all that. And I think if anyone's going to do this, I think it's Apple. And um, I think they're going to I think they're going to follow a really similar playbook to the one that I recognized with the Apple Watch. Um, and it wasn't the first time they'd done this, but it was the first time that I was red-pilled enough to figure out what it was that they were doing. Do you remember what went down with... Red-pilled enough? Yeah. What? Just just like, you know, reality aware enough. Whoa. What? Okay. Uh... I, I know that it has like stupid like negative connotations or whatever, but I'm I refuse to I refuse to see it that you're, way. You're going with like movie reference. I'm going with movie reference, I the Matrix. That. Yeah, yeah. So um so do you remember what they did with the Apple Watch? They didn't they just like wait, observe other people doing it wrong and then do it themselves? Well, yeah, That's they the did standard, they did that to a degree, but they released the Apple Watch. Right? As long as it's not the little blue pills, Linus. What's wrong with that? I mean, you know. You wanna, Things happen, okay? You, you want to please your partner, right? <laughs> you need a little bit of help. There's nothing wrong with that. It's not. Life isn't about holding each other down, okay? Sometimes it's about lifting things up. Um, anywho, um, what they did with the Apple Watch okay. was they released it as the Apple Watch. And then when the next generation product came out, all of a sudden, it was like Apple Watch Series 1 or something like that. Like, remember, the branding was kind of funny around it. And what they did is they retroactively, like, retconned the Apple Watch being the Apple Watch, and they changed the name to Series 0. And then, like, really quickly, software support for it, like, kind of Weird. went like it wasn't getting the latest features and it got kind of knew about that. yeah it got kind of like b tier long term software support and was sort of was sort of treated as was sort of treated as like a a a, a lesser product it kind of it kind of went away and what i figured out at that time was oh this is the apple version of a dev kit they just it's like minimum viable product it's yeah, that makes sense. It's it's acceptable enough, and um, 
you know, as long as we, and, and, and the hardware is like underpowered, it's slow and it's crappy, but we're just going to kind of like support it for as long as we kind of have to. And the new ones are so much better that most people probably upgrade anyway. And oh, I hope they didn't buy the gold one. Uh, and, and, and it just kind of quietly went away. And it wasn't until later that I realized that, oh, apparently Series Zero was an unofficial name. They just oh. called it Apple Watch First Generation. And they released a Series One that was an upgraded version of the original. Okay, so there, that that was the funky branding. So that's why people called it the Series Zero because the the first one just like sucked. It basically got treated like an experiment, and it's not the first time they did that. The iPad is actually another classic example. The first generation iPad was so much worse than the sec the next generation iPad. It was way slower. It was fatter. The battery life sucked. It was so much worse that I forget what the exact numbers are, but I think it ended up getting software support for something like half the amount of time mm -hmm. compared to the iPad 2, which was back when Apple had sensible product naming schemes for at least some things. iPad, iPad 2, simple, right? No. Anyway, um, and so this is, this is kind of a thing they do. The first generation iPhone sucked. It didn't even have 3G support, mm -hmm. right? Like it sucked. It was essentially a dev kit. And you could, I think you could make that argument pretty solidly for all three of those products. You could iterate when, off of that first one very quickly though. Exactly. Would, yeah. That's yeah. what I'm saying. So I, so I was looking at this, I'm looking at all the. Oh my. Yeah, this is not a very good connector. Um, <laughs> So I'm looking at all of the uh, the indications for the upcoming Apple Apple VR mixed reality whatever you want to call it the upcoming Apple headset, and it's like yeah it's probably basically not going to do anything out of the gate and this technology is super immature and it's probably going to kind of suck, and my initial like knee jerk reaction is oh it's not very Apple like to you know release like something it, that sucks but yeah i hear you now but it's actually very apple like they just also replace it really quickly exactly so they released the first generation product to the public as a dev kit but instead of charging dev kit like pricing they charge retail like pricing, pricing yeah. and no no dev kits are typically more i mean they charge like oh, okay like yeah, yeah, consumer yeah. pricing and consumers can buy it if they want to be part of the experience and live on the bleeding edge, but understand that this thing is probably going to go away in terms of software support because devs are going to come up with really amazing things that you can do with the Apple headset and Apple's going to build new capabilities into that next headset. They're going to iterate fast and you're going to get left behind. And as long as it doesn't cost too much money, I guess that's okay. Or maybe if it does cost too much money, I guess that's okay too, because you like giving Apple your money. Like, I don't think the iPhone really got good until the iPhone 4. And maybe that's partly just personal bias because that's when I bought an iPhone. But that was the first time I felt compelled to own one. Oh, I think I think the iPhone 3G was still a pretty massive paradigm shift. That's fair. It felt extremely, like, cheap and I don't know. I don't know if I would say, yeah. I don't know if I would slow. say if it was good yet. But it was still, like... That was still the big moment, I think, in my opinion. A 3GS wasn't bad, people are saying. Because mm. that one was a lot faster. Mm. Like, a lot faster. Um, I never had any of them, so I don't know. Is LMG invited to WWDC? No. Um, Apple and I have no longer been friends on Facebook for a long time. I we were never friends on Facebook. <laughs> friendship, friendship never not ended started. with Apple. Yeah, friendship <laughs> never started. <laughs> uh, Apple's one of those companies that um you have to play the game. You have to you have to cover them the way they want to be covered. And my understanding is Mac address actually has a relationship with Apple now. But I um, the second I found out about that, I went, cool, I'm not going to be involved at all. Probably good. Which, yeah, is almost certainly for the best. <laughs> I think they need to just do their thing yeah. and uh, not let me um, 
talk to Apple at all because I would almost certainly say something that's not but Apple he, friendly. Okay, so yes, but even outside of that, just like the association, like if they if they just treat MAC address like its own yep. encapsulated thing. Well, they, they know that MAC address is under the LG yeah. umbrella. It's yeah. not a secret. No, for sure. But um, we actually, we talked about that when we were starting the channel was we, we had like serious internal discussions. Do we stealthily make this thing completely separate um, knowing that that could facilitate building a relationship with Apple, um, but could blow up in our face when people figure out later that it was part of the LMG umbrella, or do we just own that it's part of LMG up front, be transparent, even if it costs us ever building that relationship. So we just have to like buy samples and do videos later forever. Cause we'll never get, you know, a reviewer relationship. We'll never get our questions answered. Um, knowing also though, that the benefit will be that we can grow the channel faster. There's all these pros and cons. And ultimately we went with, we went with transparency. Um, I just don't like, I don't like drama. I just don't need it in my life. I think it's a lot easier to just be upfront with people. Yeah. Which again, like, makes it that much more triggering for me when I see conspiracy theories about how I'm accepting, you know, under the table sponsorships from doing this, from doing that. And if I was doing any of that stuff, like, look at the kind of turnover there is in the tech industry. You, know, you think someone would have talked at some point, like, about how much under the table money I took? Like, whatever. Um, I think we should hit up merch messages. Let's hit up some merch messages. We're at over three hours for the runtime. So what? Yeah, I, I said you had 10 minutes left, and then you did, like, 14 more topics. <laughs> uh, oh, want to go to lunch with Dr. Cutris after when? Uh, if I can bring Wendell. Yeah, sure. Because I was planning on going with Wendell. But okay. meeting up with Dr. Cutris would be fantastic. Okay. I haven't seen him this whole show. Yeah, let's go. Sweet. Um, man, now I'm looking forward to lunch. <laughs> yeah, me uh, too. <laughs> okay, we're going to do these merch messages pretty fast here. Uh, oh, okay. Hey, Andy, should we... Should we turn off the light? Are we turning off the light? Merch messages after dark? I mean, let's see how much of an effect it has. I kind of feel right. like not much. I could just take down the grade. Um, that's probably too dark. <laughs> does that have a does that have a, a fade on it at all? <laughs> what is it like? Oh. Oh. Ah. <laughs> Don't step into that light. <laughs> that's how you know you're dead. Um, sure. Yeah, we'll we'll call that Wine Show After Dark. <laughs> Wine Show so After it's like, Dim. It's noon. Yeah, it's noon. It's pretty late for All you right. guys in the afternoon now. Um, okay, yeah, let's like get into it. M. Morning merch messages. Morning merch messages. Good morning merch messages. Hi peeps. In retrospect to reviews like the Ally one that come out way before the actual release date, would it be fair to make the review closer to the release date as things may change? That's a really good question, and I think this is pro was probably prompted by Dave 2 ds video on the Ally, um, where the title uh, was basically "Don't trust other reviews of the ROG Ally," um, and kind of talks about uh, covering the product uh, later. And I, um, you know, I like Dave. I've I've met Dave before, and. Honestly, there's no real way for me to sugarcoat this, though. I think that's a shockingly bad take. You, 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 you cover a product when the manufacturer says it's done, and to to not cover it at that point, like you can make your decision to 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 not cover it because you think it's not in a good enough state or whatever else. Uh, but at the end of the day, to say that another media publication did anything wrong um, or that or that readers and viewers shouldn't trust another review because it was it was done at an earlier stage in the product's lifetime is sort of puzzling to me. Um, like I, I think there is an absolute benefit to covering products over their lifespan. Uh, so I don't I don't disagree with that. I think that's really good. But at the end of the day, we can only cover what we're given. And when the manufacturer says, "Hey, this is this is prime time," we're not in a position to say, "No, we disagree that it's prime time. Uh, we're going to cover it when it's 
like more prime timer, um, our job is to say, you know, hey, this is the day that pre-orders are going up and this is the state of this product because Asus might fix it more or they might not. And if they don't, you need to understand exactly what it is you're buying. They said it was done. And so if they think it's done, then as far as I'm concerned, they could stop development tomorrow. They probably won't, um, but they could. And so you have to you have to cover things as they are, um, rather rather than covering them as they will be. You can acknowledge what they might be. Uh, you can talk about yeah, what the brand too, says they might do, but no, you've got to. Yeah, yeah, you gotta. Eh. Eh. <laughs> Next up. Uh, I forget what the actual question was. Why don't you Aren't review you it? Uh, reviewing it closer to the release date. date. Yeah. Yeah. No. Uh, no. We 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 should review it when ASUS asks for pre asks for pre order money. They're asking for your money. As far as I'm concerned, the second a brand is asking for your money, we need to take a close look at exactly what you're getting for it. And then if that changes over time, hey, that's great. I mean, Valve's done a great job of that with the Steam Deck, but we can take it for granted. And if other publications cover it closer to the availability date, a month after the availability date, six months after the availability date, I hope. Check them out. Yeah, check it out. We had this conversation earlier in the show. We don't all have to say the same thing. You don't like, yes. it's not of particular benefit to you for like every single reviewer to release identical videos all at the exact same minute. Like just whatever. Yes, game linked is real. Lakeways and float plane chat. Go subscribe. Okay, up next is from David. What is the most interesting thing you saw at Computex that you thought wouldn't make a good video? Hmm. Oh, that's a really good that's a question. Very good question. I like this one a lot. Yeah, because you got two uh, brains. You got two brains, don't you? Wow, this thing's cool. Nobody cares. Yeah, that happens to me a lot at these type of shows. But I wasn't on the show floor, so this is all Linus. Holy crap! Um... Okay. Yeah, I uh I swung by like the USB IF booth. Um and they had just like vendor showcases of 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 cool tech that's coming and uh they they had um I think it was either a live demo or it was just some information on like USB 80 gig, like 80 gigabit. And I was like, "Wow." See you later. That booth is always fun to go by yeah. and never worth making a video at. Yeah. But like, yeah, absolutely. Every um, time it's here, it's cool. And they're here every time. So, yeah. man, there's, uh, there's, I love going through, there's like, I wasn't there this year, so I'm going to describe it poorly, but there's one side of the hall, which is like more consumer focused stuff. And then there's the other side of the hall, which is like, you know, the, the companies that actually make the things that a lot of the other brands are branding. Um, going through that section is very interesting. Yeah, I think uh, we did a video on that one year actually. Uh, MSI makes a car charger apparently in oh, some whoa. markets. That's random. So I was like, uh, okay. And uh, oh, I dropped by. I dropped by this company that makes switches with screens on them, and it's for it's for like aviation consoles and stuff like that. And it the, so not like key switches, not for like a keyboard. Well, they are, but not for a keyboard. But like for for like a giant dashboard you know uh i was like wow super cool see you later uh, <laughs> yeah what else man that's uh this is like not uh not not video worthy uh super micro had a really cool liquid cooled server in fact there's a ton of immersion and conventional liquid cooling server stuff there's a lot of stuff it shows like this that like it seven to ten years ago we probably would have made a bunch of videos about um but at this point especially with how youtube is doing things um if those videos aren't just like bangers it can hurt the channel so you gotta be careful 
Yeah. Okay, hit me. Okay, speaking of hurting the channel, Linus, in the event of your death, who would you want to sponsor your funeral? And how would the segue go? I would expect it to be Dbrand. I would hope it was yeah. Dbrand as well. Yeah, that's like... If my... If my if my coffin didn't have like a Damascus vinyl skin on it, I'd be extremely disappointed. You have to, your coffin and your car have to match. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm crying get, with tears of laughter. To the, you get driven to it in a hearse that is also wrapped. Well, yeah, they could. Well, no, no, it would. They it wouldn't need to be a hearse. They could just get the longer Taycan. <laughs> <laughs> Rip out the back seats and throw me in there. I'm, I'm thinking. Yeah. I mean, you wouldn't even need to rip out the back seats. I'm not that tall. <laughs> just, just stuff me in the trunk. Oh, oh boy. Yeah. So, I, actually, you know you what? Like, you have a Vaughn do a speech. It's just a segue to a sponsor in the middle. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna ask for a commitment um, right now. Actually. Oh no. I'm gonna message. Um, <laughs> Uh, I'm live on the WAN show right now, and I need you to commit to sponsoring my funeral if I die, period. I expect the coffin to be wrapped in whatever your gaudiest, <laughs> tackiest pattern is. Okay, uh, I will... I will. He literally uh, just said that to Brand. I will let you guys know. Um, what, I'll let you know what they say, assuming they get back to me in a, in a timely manner here. I think oh, you're crying. Man. Oh, fuck <laughs> Oh, Joyce. Oh, Joyce. Okay. Uh, hey, LTG team. Linus, Luke, I have a question. Rewatching the office moving vlogs. In them, uh, Linus keeps hey. referring to having to move and inspectors making sure you are moved out. Did anyone kick you out? Yes. Yeah. See, you see, we had a certain caretaker for the property that never did anything. And so the neighbors got mad about the state of the property and started poking around and realized we were running a commercial entity there. Uh, the good news is by the time this whole thing came to a head, um, we were already planning to move anyway. So when the city came and said, hey, you guys need to move or we're going to start finding you like thousands of dollars a day, uh, we were like, hey, hey, whoa, 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 okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. The only reason that we haven't moved yet is because of like city permitting issues. So like... Can we chill? Can we work together to get us out of here? It was never supposed to grow this big. It was supposed to be small and everything was fine. Um, yeah. And they were like, okay. <laughs> so we got that all, we got that all sorted out, but it did mean that we had to get in there a little bit sooner than the building was actually ready yeah. because our other contractor who we've worked with a few times and are mostly fairly pretty good okay, -ish, yeah, okay. pretty yeah. okay pretty good uh martini construction um they were experiencing some delays at that time um overall shout out Sharmar. pretty shout out martini they're pretty okay um not shout out grn pool and landscape that's where i'm at <laughs> Hey guys, from recent coverage, you clearly have a great relationship with reps from tech companies. As previously unshared stories of reps just coming through and helping you out big time? Oh, I mean, it's endless, right? How could we do anything that we do without help from these passionate people at these companies that, you know, just want people to, to see and enjoy their products, right? Like it's, I, I know it sounds really cheesy when I say it like that, but there is no, there is no wizard hiding in the side room. There is no Scooby Doo. Aha! That like really is it for a lot of people who work in the tech industry, and it's one of the reasons that like compensation in the tech industry kind of sucks because people are so passionate about it. They just like really want to build cool tech products, um, and that's a shame. But it's also really cool that everyone's so passionate. So I don't know what to tell you. Um, you know, I want everyone to be compensated fairly, but I also want to work with people who are super passionate. And I think there are some employers that will always try to leverage that, right? Was there anything that made you personally excited that won't make its way into a video? And what was it? Um, I think we just did that. 
Yeah, I, I think this is more excited. I mean, general. I wasn't excited by the switch. No, this I think this is more general than uh, than Computex. Than Computex, yeah. I think it was Computex. Okay, um, moving on then. Well, I, I mean, I was still thinking. Oh, okay, sorry. Made me excited, but won't make its way into a video. Never mind, I'm over it. Do you see the opportunity for a physics like add-in card for AI with games moving forward? No, no, no. I don't think. We're no, going we're going to use our we're going to use our GPUs for AI. We've yeah. already the, the 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 time for more add-in cards I think is past, and yeah. the time of of tightly integrated chips is now, old yeah. man. Yeah. Hi, LLD. Been watching since two thousand and eleven. What did you think about the modded 3070 with 60 gigs of 16 gigs of RAM? And what do you guys think that Nvidia will do with the companies behind those mods? Great job. Nvidia will ignore it. And what do I think about it? I think it's super cool and I'm really frustrated because we actually had the idea of modding additional VRAM on GPUs and testing them like years ago. And I asked um, Gary, who now works for us, but previously worked at ASUS, if he could facilitate getting us access to the gear that we would need to do something like that, or at the very least recommending what gear we would need to do it. And he was like, yes, 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 yes. Boom, other people did it. So thanks, Gary. <laughs> Rough. Uh, love you now all. everyone's doing it. Oh, well, you still have to, you still have a chance to miss it by another couple of years. Love you all. First purchase. Buying ABC for a dear friend's new baby. With Yvonne nice. being uh, the behind-the-scenes superstar she is, what are some of the ways she enjoys feeling celebrated? Your dynamic is inspiring. She... You name companies after her. She just really appreciates that. No, she doesn't like that. Yvonne Umbrella Court. The problem Favorite. with... Um, the problem for Yvonne, I think, is that I appreciate her. I know what she does, but... She feels, and in some cases it's not accurate, but in other cases it is, she feels like other people don't necessarily know or appreciate what she does. And so she doesn't want to hear it from me. Like, you know, good job, honey. Here's your quarterly performance review, A plus. Like that means nothing to her. Um, you know, what she, what she enjoys is uh, being appreciated by the people at work or by, um, by partners or by, like I, like I know there, there are, there's at least one member of one of our families. I'm keeping this as vague as I can. Um, not that it'll make a difference because, you know, I guess you might know who you are. That just doesn't seem to understand that she doesn't just hang out at her husband's business all day. You know, like I, I remember a comment was made at some point, like three years after our last kid was born. It was like, so are you ever going to go back to work? And she's like, what, you mean in the pharmacy? You understand that I am at work, right? That I never stopped working, really. Um, how many times do I have to tell you that I work for our company? Uh, like, it just, yeah, it's just, it's just rude, right? Like, it's ridiculous. Um, you know, I think that, you know, for her, it's, it's the, there are things that I can do. Like she appreciates it when I notice just, you know, casual misogyny. And that's not a word that I throw around, right? Like I think that misogyny has come to mean just anything at this point. Um, I think it's, it's, it's a lost a lot of its original meaning because now all of a sudden everything is misogyny and it's, it's, it's not. Um, but there, but there are things that are. You know, like the way that, uh, you know, a contractor will come to the oh, door man. and I'll answer the door and they'll ask a bunch of questions and I'll be like, yeah, I actually don't know. Um, my wife knows that. Give me a second. And I'll go get her and then I'll stand there and they'll keep talking to me, even though she, so she's talking to them, but they're looking they at me. They face you. Yeah. yeah my, my, my girlfriend is buying a car and she's in the car with me. She's asking the questions. And the dude is looking at her while she's asking the question and then looks at me and answers the question. Like, what are you doing? Yeah. Um, so she, you know, she appreciates it when I, when I notice and, you know, just 
you know, give her a little pat on the back after like, Hey, I noticed. And that wasn't cool. Um, you know, obviously we're not going to make a scene about something stupid like that, but like, Hey, I felt your pain there, or I was aware of it. Um, and it's, you know, it's, it's similar with stuff, uh, with stuff to do with work as well. Like when, you know, when someone walks up to me and thanks me for throwing a Christmas party, when, I didn't touch it. Um, and Yvonne did all the work and she's standing right there. Uh, I'll just be like, Hey, they mean thanks to you too. Uh, you know, like it's, it's tough, right? I do sometimes refer to you two as a unit. I know. Just, which I try to, I try to try to go the other way with it. I do. Is all I'll say. Yeah. 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 Assume I like I to think that I do better these days than I used to, but. I'll catch myself sometimes. And like, I contribute to the problem too. Like I went and named the stupid company after myself, which in okay. retrospect was absolutely a mistake. I wish I called it something else. You uh, tried. It's a lot of paperwork to change it now. Yeah. Uh, like really expensive. Yeah. Moving, Moving on. on. Okay. Hey gang, what in your opinion is the thing that- Oh, hold on, people are, hold on, hold uh -oh. on one quick thing. People are like, well, obviously you should just say it was all her. Right, but you gotta understand that it's not that simple. For people with that kind of mindset where like only a man could have done anything. Um, and she would say this and I and I would, I was like kind of dismissive of it. I was like, no way. But she'd say like, no, if you do that, if you defend me, people just assume people that it's fake be attribution. That it's because I told you to do it. Yeah. And then I was like, no way. And we did it for a bit. And it, she was right. Yeah. People just have their minds made up. They see whatever they want to see. They hear whatever they want to hear. And I don't mean that universally, but some people do. And so you just have to kind of go, you know, yeah, I'm, I'm sorry that happened. I'm that sucked. Um, I know what you did. And yeah, go ahead. Sorry, Dan, go ahead. No, that's totally fine. Hey gang, what in your opinion is the thing the tech community strongly demands or desires that you know will end up being something that everyone will regret wanting? Jeez, what is with these questions? How am I supposed to, how am I supposed to do that? I mean, I think, I think we could have called it on horse armor. Um, what else though? Do you think like, do you think AI and gaming is going to be one of those things we regret, re regret, regret wanting? No, I think that'll be really cool. Yeah. What are we going to regret wanting? I mentioned earlier in the show, people wanting uh all the reviewers opinions to be the same i don't know if that really fits the yeah the spirit of this question but i i would say that i i, I actually like i i know i'm like making a big deal about it but i i think that's extremely bad and like people need to really crush that immediately but you know what i like it good job cool got him i agree with you i have exactly the same take I do that to him all the time. How is he so good at this? Just in case people didn't get that. <laughs> oh, it's maddening. <laughs> Hi, Linus, Luke, and Dan. Love all the Computex covering from LTT and other outlets this year. Has there been any tech trend, good or otherwise, from the different vendors that surprised you this year? I didn't expect behind the motherboard, you know, hidden connectors to get so much attention. It feels like the kind of thing we could have done forever ago. And didn't so Did I, you? I just not not the not the PC community, but like connectors on the back of the motherboard is not a new thing. No, no, not it's at just all. Just a new thing to like In gaming us. PCs. Yeah, 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 yeah. And uh, I'm, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm. I don't know if I'm excited for it. Like we definitely need to see some new case designs to really get the most out of it. But I'm not not excited for it. it definitely, it it surprised me. I, I yeah, I think it's pretty cool. Um. Here, okay, another tech trend. Uh, I am amazed by the number of companies getting into like sim racing tech. Cooler yeah, Master showed yeah. off a chair. That has been weird, hasn't it? EK showed off this entire twenty-five thousand dollar kit. That was very surprising. EK to me. of all. I yeah, I kept asking people like, "You're sure it was EK? It wasn't like someone else?" How many people 
are buying like multi access. I know there's absolutely a community for it, but like setups. you'd think it would support like two brands total or something. Yeah. Not 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 the amount that are in it. Like it's it's one of those things where like I know what tooling costs. Yeah. It so, costs a lot. You gotta be selling like thousands of something to make it make sense to manufacture it. Well, get, sort of, depending on the price. Gibram and Floatplane Chat said it really took off with the pandemic. So I agree, especially like F1 and stuff, sim racing at home. Like the actual professional drivers were doing it, it on stream and stuff. Oh my God, who is spending that kind of money on this sort of thing? Also, it's sort of over. And we're already seeing consumer trends setting back to what they were before. I just, of. I don't know. I just don't get it. Like I'm, like I'm thinking about the amount of the amount of money i would have to be earning to spend to $25,000 on a toy and part of it because you're going to end up investing more or spending i should be saying you're going to end up spending more for sure because that's like where you start right yeah and no the pro drivers are not buying some kit from ek or some chair from cooler master like I just crazy stuff. Yeah, they are getting some consultant to come in and build them like a very custom like D box setup or whatever else, right? Yeah. Like I just yeah. people are like it's a hobby. Like sure. What an insane hobby. It takes up so much space though. Like wow. I just and yes, yes, I know they start at much much lower prices for for DIY kits. I just it's one of those things. It's like uh. It's like an Alienware laptop. In theory, these things exist. Or in theory, people are buying them. Otherwise, they wouldn't like, exist. You never see them. But I've never seen one. Yeah. And, and I, I have seen an Alienware laptop now. I'm talking more like back when I was working at NCIX 10 years ago. You know, Alienware had $5,000, $6,000 laptops back then. And they were obviously, I mean, even the desktops. You know, I would look at it and I'd go, Alienware is a brand of computers obviously otherwise they wouldn't have a website but i've never seen one you know i've never seen an actual gamer gaming on one of these and so it's the same thing like these sim these sim setups it's the kind of thing we build for spectacle or like dead mouse had one but how many dead mouses are there in the world people with the means the space and the passion for gaming they can't they just can't be that many Shraf and float plane chat says in all caps, it's cheaper than actually hobby racing IRL. It's like, okay. <laughs> well, I wouldn't do that either. That sounds really expensive. Exactly. <laughs> Time consuming. I mean, uh, yeah, yeah, I, uh, and, and I, I, you know what, this is one of those things where I think I just have to acknowledge that as not a car enthusiast, I will never be able to put myself into the headspace of a car enthusiast. I mean, I, I, I know for a fact that Jake has relatively limited space compared to someone like Dead Mouse. Yeah. And he still feels it's a high enough priority to have a sim racing setup in his computer room. Yes. Same for Ed. We saw this in their extreme tech upgrades. So clearly it's a thing. But like $25,000 EK rig? Yeah, that seems outlandish. Next up, we gotta get through these. We got we got stuff to get to. Sorry, there. sorry. As a gun collector, that's entry level. Yeah, I will never understand collecting. I'm yeah, sorry, I just I don't think, think I will. My yeah. favorite comparison. Uh -huh. You do some collecting. Sorry? You do some collecting. Sure, what do I collect? Controllers. Sort of. I use them all. My controller yeah. collection is like nine controllers. Like they actually are all in my daily rotation. Yes, but like, you they're can't, all in the you rotation. Can't say that you didn't buy that like Xbox edition one. The prototype one right but project you, scarlet yeah you do use it yeah but you still bought it in what i would see as like a a, a collector approach yeah i guess that's true when i said collection i meant more in terms of like when i okay when i heard gun collection i was thinking like okay how many how many guns can one person fire at once my collector control my collector my, my controller collection can all actually be used all at once, like playing Mage Quit. Yeah. I actually just need you 10 controllers. All of those. So if yeah. I'm going to have to have 10 controllers, why would I buy all the same one? Mm -hmm. I don't consider that a collection. 
I have some very collectory, unique uh, item controllers. You, you appreciate unobtainium in things. I do. Which is not is not 100% the same either. And like people are talking about my gold controller. I knew you were going to go there with this, but I wouldn't have done that I if would, it wasn't yeah. to make a video. Yeah, I wasn't going to. For that reason, I wasn't even going to mention yeah. it. Um, yeah, people like to be frank. Many collectors item guns. You shouldn't fire for safety reasons. Yeah, see, this is what, yeah, this is what I'm talking about. Um, yeah, that I don't understand. I also don't understand people that buy things with the purpose of leaving them in the box. I've never, I've never understood that at all. It's okay, like Schro Schrodinger's item. I need to talk to the community about this. Mm, yeah, I know what you're gonna reference. Yeah, um, we have a sponsor. I'm not gonna name them. You can guess. Uh, do you, are you able to create a poll? Uh, we have a sponsor that wants to send us multiple, not one, but multiple sealed, clear, or like like color, trans transparent edition N64s to unbox all of them on short circuit. And I'm looking at it going, um, I, I think keep it simple, just... Uh, should we is it cool or is it bad and I'm looking at this going I think people are going to be really angry about us breaking the seals on like five transparent n64s people um, are already on both sides of this see this is what I don't I don't understand actually in the slightest because like what's the point what's the point in leaving in the box I almost think it's worse to leave in the box because then no one gets to enjoy it. All you get to enjoy is the external cardboard and you could still enjoy that if you took it out of the box. Yeah, but it's just, it's one of those things like- I just don't get it. From my point of view, even though I'm not a collector and I frankly just don't really get it, it's like it's like taking some hollow foil first print Char Charizard See, I still or don't something get this. and just like ripping them up. Oh. Or like folding the corner. Cause you're not you're not ripping it up but you're like haha -ha, i made this worth less <laughs> watch me but do it again can, no, ha, -ha i did it again I, I don't think that works because you could still play the game with it without doing that but you could still play the well you can't play the n64 but we're because you could like treat it nicely no one's gonna play tcg with a first edition hollow foil charizard i totally would you're an idiot but i wouldn't buy one but like, and if I had one, oh, I would sell it. Okay. <laughs> because I don't we see did. the value in it, right? <laughs> you know, I don't think you're an idiot. Well, no, because I I would never be in that scenario because other people value it so much more that I would sell it immediately. So, so like, you're if saying it, if it didn't, so you're have, saying I should take the N64s and I should sell them. I mean, if it was absolutely, because <laughs> if if it's in my possession and I can't sell it. Like, sure, I'm going to open it. Or if, if if I have this hollow Charizard, but if I sell it, I go to jail. I don't care. I'm not going to just leave it on a shelf. That has literally, genuinely zero value to me. I'm also probably not going to play the game with it because I also don't care about that. But <laughs> I wouldn't mind, especially if it's in like a nice sleeve or whatever. Like, why do I care? Dbrand responded, we'll send the bill to Yvonne. I think they misunderstood. I want them to pay to sponsor the funeral. <laughs> I can't tell with these guys sometimes. Um, all right. The poll seems pretty conclusive that it's cool. You apparently but, but, have... But those bads? Are going to be real mad. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh yeah like those are those are some I, I i pretty much bet you the intensity of voting here is not equal the people yeah. that are saying cool are like me they don't care it doesn't matter they're not going to watch a video because you happened to open it you know yeah. what i mean the bads are going to be enraged because you happen to open it like these are these are different things like i just don't value something remaining in a box i don't value a car that doesn't get driven i don't value uh, a console that doesn't get played like i don't i don't care about those things so you're saying i'm allowed to buy an expensive car he 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 told me he was like worried about my my soul or something like that like if i got too like into 
you know, just luxury stuff, which is fair. Uh, so, but, but I'm allowed to buy an expensive car, which you don't seem to have a problem with as long as you get to drive it. Um, <laughs> You also didn't get the other one you were talking about. But if I had two and I can only drive one at once, is that a problem now? <laughs> well, no, it's not because if you drove them at all, because there, there's people that will will acquire a car or the firearm in the previous conversation or a Pokemon card in the previous conversation or a console in this conversation and never, they will refute, they will leave it in the box. They'll never touch it. They'll be in like a climate controlled glass Thing, okay. And you're not even allowed within a foot of it, all this type of stuff. Well, what if it was a middle ground? What if I had two cars, a daily driver, and one that I only drive on Sunday so that I can keep it in good condition? At least you drive it. At least you drive it. Okay. What if I had seven cars, one for every day of the week? At least you drive it. That, least, that's so, literally not different. So for you, it's just black and white for you. <laughs> Pretty much. You okay. should use the thing. So I'm allowed to have a Toyota Corolla GR then? Yes. Yeah, I love yes. how excited. <laughs> That's a sweet car, and I like really want you'd have to actually drive it though. That would be my. Well, thing. I would drive it. Yeah, sweet. That thing looks freaking awesome. Yeah, awesome. But you you should yeah. enjoy it because it's cool to drive. Like the firearm example. Like if you had this firearm that you keep in a safe, well, you and it's keep never it allowed safe. out. If you if you shoot it on like special occasions, what I mean by the safe is like you never even get to see it. Like yeah, okay. but if if it's like a special occasions thing, like um even once a year as long as it's used it's like all right i don't i don't mind that but like it it feels notably bad to me to just be like no i'm going to keep this n64 and it's going to stay in a box forever and i don't want it to ever be used i don't want anyone to ever play a game on it i don't want anyone to ever touch it it's translucent which is awesome but it's going to stay in cardboard so never no one will ever see through this translucent plastic like what ah that seems that's rough to me i i actively don't like that but the amount that i actively don't like that is very small and the amount that people don't like it when you open those things is very big <laughs> yeah everyone wants me to get the gr Yes, please. It's a sweet car. Ah, oh, I've been so close like twice. And it just feels really stupid because I can only drive one car at once. I don't think you should actually... But then my Taycan's been in the shop for like almost six weeks. What if you sell a Taycan and get the GR? I'm not going to go back to going to gas stations all the time. Honestly, as stupid and trivial as it sounds, that is a huge part of the reason that I like driving an electric car. I hate refueling. I don't know if you should get it then. Take but the my Taycan argument is maybe train. not the thing that you might think it would be. Sorry. Sorry. Yeah, go for it. Um, yeah, we got a massive delay. Sorry. And my reason is because of a comment that you made not even that long ago when you had to drive your old v Volt. Yeah. So Volt, right? Yeah. Volt. 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 You had to drive your old Volt again, and you're like, yeah, I mean, it's really not that different. That's my reason why I don't think you should get it. The GR? Oh, the GR would be different. Is it? Would it be? Would you actively actually enjoy it? It has a manual transmission. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's a three-cylinder manual tranny, like super lightweight. Just that sounds fun. Like stupid. Would mobile. you track? Would you track it? Um, I mean, he would track it for me. You'd track it for him. Oh, yeah. I mean, oh God, he'd probably it's he'd probably pay go, me to rent it. Can I go? Car. Can you drive me around? Can I go with you? Or, you should. You should buy the well, GR. You're getting a Type R? Yeah, I have two deposits. Two deposits? Yeah. Are you going to scalp one so you can afford the no, other? No, it's just like... Yeah, okay, it. sure. Like, I've been waiting for like a year and a half. I don't, I'm not going to judge you. I don't care. Yeah. Why not? Andy's going Type R. All right. Well, let's let's keep going because like, yeah. we're, we're actually late. Oh, yeah. Yeah, like a lot. get lunch. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like I'm people sure. are flying out and stuff, and this show's been on for almost four hours. We need to finish okay. this. Yeah, let's go. Okay. Uh, if you guys want to go through potentials and respond to them, I'll start reading you the rest of the curated. I'll go from a the top. A lot of them are stuck for you. Oh, okay. I'm sure with this Taiwan trip, you have gotten to eat some great food. What are some standout foods or meals you have experienced in different countries? Uh, by a long shot, the best food I ever ate anywhere was uh, on the Intel trip. I couldn't believe how good the food was there. Um, Taiwan is really great too, though. I just, man, I just love like, just like comfort food here. Just like beef noodle soup. We went for like really good beef noodle soup last night. It's just oh, so good. 
Hi, Linus Luke and Dan. What has been the greatest challenge in your lifetimes to overcome, and how did you overcome it? Uh, oh, wow. I just replied to that one. I think the obvious answer is kids, man. It's uh, Raising kids is the most challenging and important thing I will ever do. Are you doing curated or potential at the moment? Potentials. I'm going to start at the top of potentials. Okay. Uh, I am, uh, okay, that one must have come down and pushed it. I see. Uh, what a Computex do you wish you could make? Uh, what the hell is going on? There's duplicates. <laughs> Hi, LLD. With your ongoing goal of making a badminton court complex, what other sports centers or storefronts would you like to try and open? I would like to see you open a PC or mobile phone repair shop. Oh, uh, that's very unlikely to happen. Yeah. I could see us doing, I could see us doing like a gaming Airbnb or like a gaming hotel, but like in a more of like a Western style. Um, I could see, I could see expanding the racket sport thing. I could see adding like squash and racquetball, and like tennis, and like doing like like a, like a huge complex. And, and I'm assuming I have unlimited money for this, which I don't. Um, it's just going to be badminton and it's just going to be a small pro shop. But hey, if I'm imagining things, then that's that's what I would imagine. Uh, one of your rare 45 plus viewers. I retire in two and a half years and wonder if you would recommend a new career in tech at 50. And what would you point to? Well, we have a lot more 45 plus viewers than you would think. I can tell you that much already, just based on people who walk up to me at trade shows and on the street. Um, as for a new career in tech, man, that's tough. Tech is always moving so fast. The, the best thing is to just, you know, keep your ear to the ground. Um, and, you know, chase your passion, right? Like I, uh, the, the, the billionaire that I was meeting with, uh, I, I asked, you know, Hey, well, you know, obviously I could probably look this up, but, uh, you know, I'd love to hear it from you instead, you know, what's your story. And I was just so impressed by how passionate he was about what he was doing. And I just, I loved that. And it started with just trying to fix a simple problem, just identifying something that was a problem and, and, and building a solution for it that he was excited about. I just, I thought that was so cool. And I think that's just a great approach for everybody, whether you make a dollar or a billion dollars, um, if you can solve a problem, you're going to get satisfaction from it. And if you can solve a problem that a lot of people have, then, well, you're more likely to not make just a dollar. Gentlemen and Linus, I'm picking up the ABC book for my soon-to-be niece. Looking forward to indoctrinating her. Everyone asks about parenting tips, but do you fellas have any uncling tips? I don't know. I feel like it's pretty easy. You're more of an uncle than me. I, well, I literally am. Well, I actually, I actually have a nephew and niece. Oh, okay. Yeah. I mean, you have the easy job, right? You get to swoop in when it's fun and hang out. And then when things suck, you get to leave. So it's like, I don't know. Um, I haven't been one of kids that are old enough to really do a lot of the things that I think uncles would be best at doing. Um, but the things that I'm prepared and excited to do is like be very present. Um, like when, when my brother's daughter grows up, I'm sure she will be involved in some type of activity i don't know whether it's a sport or something else but um i would like to to be there and support um yeah i don't know try to help with like um opportunity enablement as much as possible if if my brother and his wife are, are busy try to help stuff like that i just treat my nephew and niece like i would my kids um, I firmly believe that, you know, kids need structure. And I think just being the fun uncle is not necessarily a good play. I want to be the, uh, the uncle that gave them good advice and told them the right things and, um, you know, checked them when they were, when they were doing something that was going to cause problems. Um, yeah, I just, I just uncle exactly the same as I parent. That's true. I feel the same way about like dogs and stuff too. It's the same thing. I just, you're not going to be there all the time. So I, I think something that gets lost on a lot of people in that situation is that um, the kids still value you being there, even though you're not their direct parents. So you shouldn't forget that and you should actually be there. And they like notice when you're not there. So, yeah. 
Linus, you've mentioned your socks before. What are your favorite configs for your daily socks? I only wear one sock. Um, well, when, unless I'm trialing prototypes of the socks that we're trying to make, uh, and they're just darn toughs, regular like crew sock. I actually was on their site the other day because someone asked me about this, and I didn't see the exact model that I have anymore, but they're they're just so good. Merino wool. They're they're the reason that we haven't made a sock yet because I can't beat them or match them. If we can even get like ninety five percent of the way there, I'll consider that good enough. But we can't yet. Last of mine curated. Hey, DLL, how important is it for you to not be recognized in public when you just want to enjoy something else? Now you guys are famous. Uh, greetings from Germany. I give up. You just yeah. There's a there was a video that came out recently of some some dude streaming riding a bike um, in Norway or something, and he he goes past uh, Magnus Carlsen who's sitting on a bench watching something on his phone. And the guy asked for a selfie from Magnus. And Magnus is like, first of all, tells him like, sorry, I don't want to be bothered right now. And then the guy talks to him anyways. And then he goes, could I like get a selfie with you after I watch this thing? And the guy's like, no, I'm in a hurry right now. I need it right now. And gets really pushy. And then Magnus like goes to take the photo with him. And then the guy asks for Magnus to stand up for the photo. And you can tell that Magnus is like really annoyed, but just, doing it anyways and like the the dude's streaming this whole time so now this interaction is on camera and it's just like oh man stuff like that's really rough i um i always prefer that people like say hi um because i i would always rather know that you recognize me than sit there and like wonder if people around me know who i am um but i know that's not true for everyone it's gonna be slightly different for everybody which is like annoying but it is what it is so excited to get the 3d down jacket just in time for 90 degree fair oh crap i know what that sound is uh, read this one the alarm's going up <laughs> uh he's trying to get my attention with his loud beeping uh sorry guys uh, so excited for my 3d down jacket for 90 fahrenheit weather that's hot for the celsius folks out there i uh, can't wait for the lct bro tank in december uh, Linus, what's the first home project you ever did, and how did it go? I assume you mean when I moved into my place, and I'm having a really hard time actually coming up with that. I think, I think one of the first kind of home DIY things that I did was actually on video, though. I ran an ethernet cable along the outside of the house to where the media PC is. And I had a contractor help me, but I actually did do some of the work myself as well. And I made a video about it. Um, for me, like networking is the first thing that needs to be improved in a house because typically it sucks. I didn't, uh, did I do that much handy stuff? Yeah, I guess I started doing it a lot later. Like I don't count, you know, painting the nursery when we had kids. Is that a, is that a a, a home project? Yeah. Oh. Okay. How did they, How did they define it? What's um, the first home project you ever did? Yeah, that count, painting. I mean, counts. That went well. I mean, I I paint also painted the um all the furniture for the nursery, painted it white. Uh, so we had this kind of fun kind of pastel yellow and and white color scheme in there. Um. Man, it's amazing the things you forget. Yeah, I'm going to go with that. I did that. <laughs> okay, the police aren't on their way, thankfully. Um, let's see what we got here. Linus, assuming in your new position you will get a modicum of more free time, what kind of things are you going to pick up in this free time? more hosting, um, more coaching. I want to do more coaching for our hosts and our shooters and, you know, help make sure that our, everything we upload is, is LMG. -E. Uh, I hear that there are new firmware updates on the ally. Have you noticed any improvements, uh, that others have not? No. Um, 
I oh I, I can respond to this other one at the same time from Joshua uh, as uh, responding to how Tears of the Kingdom has been on the Allies so far. It's been oh I've got a couple of these. Raven also asks how's Tears of the Kingdom on the Ally. Uh, the performance I'm getting is not great right now, but I've got to be honest with you. The only time I had to play it was on the plane, and other than loading all the files onto it ahead of time, I didn't really research anything. So I was kind of trying to figure it out on my own on the plane. I tried to apply a 60 FPS mod and it seemed to make performance worse, though I wasn't really sure. Performance seemed lower than it should have been because Breath of the Wild runs amazing on it. And I wasn't really expecting Tears of the Kingdom performance to be that much lower than Breath of the Wild, given that they don't seem to look that different to me. Uh, I, I you know, could have missed something though. And I'm not just talking like when it's compiling shape this is really not working very well. Uh, I'm not just talking when it's compiling shaders. I mean, just in general, performance seemed pretty pretty rubbish, actually. And it would kind of um, start lagging more sometimes, too. So it hasn't been a great experience so far in Tears of the Kingdom. But it ran Breath of the Wild great. But I was using Simu for Breath of the Wild, and I'm using Yuzu for Tears of the Kingdom, and I'm new to Yuzu. I have spent almost no time with it. I don't really... I don't really know the ins and outs. So I forget what the original question was, but um, no, I probably haven't noticed things that other people haven't yet because I haven't really um, I haven't really had much time to game in the last like couple of weeks. Archive. Hi, Linus. Do you carry any skills from your product manager days into your day-to-day -day life? Absolutely. I mean, every everything you do, every person you meet is an opportunity to learn. And I think that's something that I, I do a relatively good job of, is just keeping my eyes open and uh, you know, trying to understand better. I actually got um, very some very high praise that, that made me really happy when we were working on our framework factory tour, Ooh. which is coming. Um, the... One of the higher ups at Framework uh, used to work in like supply chain for Apple and said that when I did my original Framework video explaining why a company needs investment and uh, sort of explaining how the supply chain works, that I got it like 85 to 90 percent right to the point. And, and like the parts that were like not that were not wrong. They were just like maybe not as thorough. Um, but she she's like super sharp, and so you know, whenever I whenever someone gives me praise, I always consider the source. So I appreciated her saying that because she seems like a shark. Um, and uh, she said, "Yeah, you got it like 85, 90 percent right." And I'm kind of sitting here going, "How does anyone in the media have any business like knowing this much about supply chain?" Because I've just never really seen that before. And yeah, it's just stuff that I've that I picked up from my product man management days and from just kind of trying to pay attention, try to understand better. Um, the intro for that video is really funny. I, I think I wrote it. <laughs> but basically, I, I'm walking down the streets in Taipei and I go, you know, yeah, PlayStation 5s, toilet paper, framework laptops. I want to buy one, but they, if it's not in stock, what's the deal with that? Why don't they just make more of them? And I have ample reason to be angry about the six, there's a six month wait right now for the AMD version of the framework yeah, laptop. That's pretty rough. And so, so I, I have ample reason to be mad about this because aside from just waiting six months for my laptop, I have a lot of money riding on them being able to deliver freaking product. So why aren't they just making more? Since I'm in Taiwan anyway, I thought I'm gonna knock on some doors and figure out what the heck's going on with my investment. <laughs> and then, this is amazing, and I'm sorry to kind of ruin the joke for you guys because it'll be really funny if you don't have it ruined. But anyway, um, it cuts straight from there to me in this like shanty, like back alley. Because when you search for framework, they have an office here, but when you search for framework on Google Maps, it takes you to some, it's labeled bicycle club, <laughs> but it seems to be like a bus repair garage oh. or something. Wow. And so I'm just standing and we actually went to the trouble to drive half an hour out of our way to go be at Framework Bicycle Club in Taiwan. And I'm like, there's a bicycle club. Did I just get played? 
And then it hard cuts to the Compile factory where frameworks are made cool. yeah, and yeah. gets into the framework, um, the framework tour, which is going to be really, really exciting. I've never been in a laptop manufacturing facility. I don't think Compile's ever done anything like that before. It's going to be really cool. And I think that's it for the WAN show. That is it. We'll see you again next week. Same bad time, same bad channel. Bye. Well, different time. This is an earlier time. Yeah.